Uh, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Free Sports. Welcome to the Free Sports IPA Premier League of Pool. We are back in Solihull in the West Midlands after a fantastic weekend of European Open action on the professional tour. We return to the business side of things with the Premier League. This is the standings so far. Only Mark Farnsworth and Ben Davis have played four games. The rest are all sitting on two. Tonight we have Gareth Hibbert, Liam Dunster, Ronan McCarthy and Jimmy Carney all in action. You can see the fixtures at the bottom of your screen right there. We also, to round things off tonight, have a repeat of the Champions Cup final, which was a belter between Liam Dunster and Ronan McCarthy to close things out tonight. And as you can see from the table, Ronan McCarthy in need of a victory. So too, Jimmy Carney and Liam Dunster. It's all to play for tonight then. Those are the fixtures. That is the table. This is the venue. And here is our first match. Gareth Hibbert on the left against Ronan McCarthy on the right. Two of the, uh, the veterans on the circuit and two of the very finest players around as well. Gareth Hibbert, world champion Jackson, just a couple of years ago. Ronan McCarthy, who has been in wonderful form in this calendar year in particular. I'd like to say, joined by Dan Davey alongside me in the commentary position. And Dan, this is a game that, I, I don't know about you, I'm really excited for this one because both of them are among the more legendary figures on, on the circuit, put it that way. But also, they've both really got something to play for tonight. Yeah, even so early doors with this um, with the table being the way it is, and it kind of just puts pressure on you, doesn't it? Even from obviously there's ten, I think, well, no, nine matches they're going to play each, and it, it I mean, it, you, you've got to be feeling that to, to lose both matches five-one puts under all sorts of pressure. And Ronan, to be honest, is probably up there in the t t three or four form players on the planet at the moment. So uh, this format is, uh, I think, lends itself to anything anything when it comes to results and when it comes to I think we've seen it already I think last week everybody beat each other yeah it's it's been a great so tournament so far into week break. four of it now it's running with the break and he could really use it going quite well really struggled with this on his first outing in the Premier League yeah I think in the, uh, that is far more like it three yellows off the break uh, can't see a yellow seems to be typical you know but can't see yellow but he is on a red into this uh, bottom right corner as we look at it and apart from that uh, I think they're all they're all pretty much there he's, he's gonna have one uh, his last ball to the black is definitely gonna be the red that's over the pocket down table so uh, it's just all gonna be a, about how he maneuvers maneuvers around these balls and gets uh, but they all go nothing needs dislodging nothing needs breaking out and uh, should should really be one nil Ronan well, he has just slotted that ball into the bottom right corner as we were looking at that replay. So the table is now a little bit more open for Ronan McCarthy. It was his real issue in, in week one. Couldn't pot a thing off the break. And in this short format especially, you're always going to struggle if the break isn't quite doing things for you. But indeed, he's had the white ball on a string so far as well. So it's, uh, I'll be very surprised if Ronan doesn't take uh, the lead. Well, this is the thing, isn't it, with Ronan, that when you see him at the table, it never looks like he's going to miss. His issue in week one, when he got pretty badly beaten in both games, was just getting at the table at times. Yeah, and it, it can be his Achilles heel, his break. Uh, doesn't he'll be the first to admit that it, his break probably isn't up to the rest of his game. Uh, the rest of his game, I probably struggle to say there's anybody better. There's probably people that are as good. But to say there's anybody better than uh, that's a kiss of death. Yeah, I think that's the the old commentator's curse striking. Sorry, Ronan. No, it's um, yeah, but but the break's typically the the thing you struggle with most over the years. So, uh, Gareth, in contrast, has probably got one of the best breaks around. Now we're going to see Ronan. This isn't a difficult shot um, to, to to make the ball. He just needs to make sure if he does get there that he only just gets there so that he's still on the black and I think he's played that just about perfect yeah the way he's sat down straight away to play this black shows that he is he'll be a little bit relieved about that because he has struggled a little bit in recent weeks where's the black it's in it's lovely it's perfect and it's 1-0 yeah and he's recovered that well very well wasn't a difficult shot like we say but but 
Definitely a uh, definitely heart would have been in mouth when, when, when just one red left, but he did really well to recover it. Yeah, he did indeed. Well, as we mentioned, he did have some inauspicious starting matches, to say the least. Five on defeats to both Ben Davis and Mark Farnsworth. Now, of course, that can happen to absolutely anyone when you're talking about the calibre of those two players. Of course, the reigning world champion and the current world number one as well. But Ronan McCarthy is a player who won't have liked those results. He can say to himself as, as much as he likes it, the balls weren't working his way, the break wasn't going his way, but he'll be really focusing on getting that back tonight. He has to. Yeah, and I think I think you, you over these weeks you want to build momentum really, so he'll be coming here thinking he needs a minimum of, of a draw and a win to get himself back up there. Uh, I think you'd probably aim for a minimum of a draw and a win. Obviously you want two wins, of course you do, but... Time if you can in. not get beat every week, you're going to get through to those final stages. So I'm going to see Gareth break here, and um, you'll, you'll probably see a lot more action on the back. Look at that. Look at that. Is the white going to get tied up? I think he's... Oh, he might just be okay. It's it's unfortunate because, as you say, I think it's, a dr nasty. it's a dream of a break in terms of where all the red and reds and yellows are. The separation he gets on this, the explosion from the pack is brilliant. He does. He seems to get that, like you, you summed up perfectly, the explosion from the pack. That, like pretty much nobody else, there's, there's others, but it's definitely in that top three or four when it comes to breakers and and the, that instant reaction he gets off the pack as soon as he makes makes contact. But maybe, I mean, it well, he's looking at this cut. Uh, his other option is a, is a double into the middle, but he'll know better because because he he can actually sit behind the shot. He can look from behind the shot and he. He's electing for the double. This is huge, even at this early stage. Doesn't go. Oh wow, he's fluked to yellow. <laughs> oh wow. Wow. And that's kept him in the frame because look what look where the other red's gone. He's now got complete control over that top left-hand corner pocket now. Look where the red goes afterwards. Oh, Gareth, <laughs> that's so lucky. How's your luck? Wow. In some ways, it's a pretty good start. But he will have to play safe. He will, and it, that I don't think he he was planning to get the, uh, the yellow he brought out over the middle pocket, but he's left Ronan a fairly simple way in, really, here, because he can just stun, see what he's going to do here, and he's going to be able to leave himself an angle to go into that. He's got a couple of options, to be honest. Uh, he's come across table, so he wants to go into it more direct, um, get get a better connection. Well, what Ronan's going to play here, don't worry if he pots the yellows. Skill shot is in play in black ball rules. Yeah, and as long as he makes his red, he can make any other ball on the table. That hasn't come out great, to be honest, but again, I mean, he's got, he's got two more options. He can actually go into this again with, with top spin off of the red into the left middle, or he can play the with slightly happen queuing albeit but he can play the red into the top right hand corner and go into it as well both fairly natural angles well he'll be a little bit miffed that n not one yellow went down out of, out of that no. crowd over the pocket yeah true I mean you're always trusting to luck but I mean all you can do in that situation he hasn't played a bad shot he's played it perfectly all you can do is just make sure you you, you, you make your red don't take your eye off the pot and, and get into them but that doesn't come out great see here he's choosing the option that you mentioned top right well that's gone down the red now goes again it's not easy but it's better than where it was before it is yeah and um, that's opened the frame up for Ronan but the, he's still got quite a bit of work to do because uh, he certainly won't want to be leaving the red uh, that he's just broken out he won't want to be leaving that to his last ball because it's going to be quite difficult to get on the black from there so we're going to see him play a more difficult shot than the obvious red into the bottom right corner pocket. But see, the reason for that, and it was a difficult pot, but the reason for that is he wanted to leave leave the red closest to the black as his last ball. Yeah, you can see where the white is. He would have left the red on the top rail as we look at it there. Was a trickier pot. But these are maybe the... The pots that just aren't quite going Ronan's way at the moment. Gareth won't worry about that red going in. He might worry about the yellow potentially going safe on that 
Christian. Yeah, and it's um, Gareth's natural instinct would be to, to attack from here. He, he could play a double. He's right on the double. He's perfect on it. But he can also leave himself... Uh, so I think we're just going to see him shut up shop here. That needs to get over. It has. So, yeah, it was the right thing to do. If he was practicing in his club, he probably would have put the uh, middle of the three yellows, then cut the one in that he's just covered the pocket with and gone into that one up the cushion. But that was the right thing to do, what he's just done there. And I think Ronan's just going to try and cover the pocket as well. See how straight the table is there, straight as a die. <laughs> uh, our table setter who was working hard earlier on in the day will be delighted with that comment. Yeah. And you can see there, the red doesn't pass uh, into that pocket, which we had a pretty good idea of, but that's just confirmation of it, really. The thing is, Ronan's going to struggle to to get that red out unless unless uh, he's down this end of the table to be able to play off of the red. Um, I don't think I don't think Gareth ideally would have wanted to leave him there, but it, it, he's still in control. And also, what Gareth's done there is develop that yellow on the side cushion, so. That and now leave him an easy positional shot to get onto the black. Well, the issue Ronan has is that red is his problem ball, but it's also Gareth's. If he moves it, opens the table up for Gareth. Now, what a shot! What is it a in? Shot. What a shot that is, Ronan oh, wow. McCarthy! Oh, wow! Wow! <laughs> that was brilliant. This isn't easy because he, he, he. Yeah. He, now, other players would have hit that a bit harder and tried to come around the back of the black. Ronan, Ronan's the kind of player that just likes to see leave himself a shot. He has done. But this is no gimme. Great shot. Well played, Ronan. Well, what an amaze against the frame for Ronan McCarthy. As you quite rightly mentioned there, Dan, Gareth was in total control of the frame. And out of nowhere, really, Ronan saw a shot. And didn't he execute it brilliantly? Um, I almost framed that shot up before he played it because the way it was, it was lying. He couldn't do anything other than that. He had to make a play with that ball because as soon as he moved it, the table, the game was done for Gareth. And you can see Gareth's recent results in this competition. He's, let's he's had mixed fortunes: a 5-1 win over Liam Dunster, which was a terrific result for him, and a 5-1 defeat to Simon Ward. And what we might see as this competition progresses is just how open it is. It's, it is a genuine possibility that any single one of these players can win this entire tournament. It wouldn't be a surprise. Correct, and it, and it wouldn't be, it's good proof there really, it wouldn't be a surprise to see anybody be anybody 5-0 or 5-1. There is no, in this format with 30, sec 30 second shot clock, um, you get one extension per frame for an extra 30 seconds, but with this shot clock and and the rules the way they are playing on a on a nice sort of fresh table the balls are breaking well splitting well uh, it, the, the the luck element comes into it a lot more but uh, that's that's why it makes it so good to watch well, oh, and he's missed his first yellow well he did pot a yellow sorry Dan he did pot a yellow into the into the middle just we were looking at the replay of the break oh uh, did he okay he did indeed and it's a real shame for him that he's missed that one but. Can Gareth capitalise, is the question. It's a good shot. Just, for him. Yeah, he just wanted to stay away from the... Uh, didn't want to cannon the black there and, and potentially tie it up with the yellow just above it. So that was nicely controlled. Um, we we'll want to get rid of this red, I think, after the one in that he plays into the middle, into this bottom left-hand corner. Um, sort of clear the table up in, in sections, really. Uh, that's how a lot of the sort of better players try and do it. So as, as long as he can keep control of the cue ball, um, he's got options here, but th this is a, needless to say, a, a must win frame for Gareth, being 2-0 down in, in the best of eight frames. He's gone a little bit awry. He's, he's, I think he's just about come far enough. Just about. Yeah, you can see by his facial expression that he doesn't like it. No, and he, he could have overhit that and been okay as well, so. Let's see him play this with left hand side and come between the gap. Well, he's okay. 
Um, he's making things difficult for himself, but he's okay. And if you can just get this frame on the board, you, you feel a lot better. Natural position, so it's just all about making the pot. Just a bit off the cushion. It's nicely done. Well, there's a strange opening to the frame from Ryan. Just as I thought, it was just starting to fall back into place for him. You know, he's had a couple. He's had a difficult last few weeks. He obviously lost both his games in the opening of the Premier League after losing the final of the Champions Cup, and didn't have a great time at the Europeans at the weekend either. And you just wondered if he he was maybe due a bit of a a bit of a bounce back. And after the first two frames, it looked like the way. And after his break was great for the third. It's the pot that you wouldn't expect him to. But here's that uh, Gareth Hibbert's recent run. He's been in pretty good nick, generally speaking. Quarterfinals at the weekend in commentary at the European Professional. And I know that was an event you, you were at, Dan. It was, it was a brilliant event, and Gareth had a pretty good time of it in the, on the second day. Yeah, he just, uh, the, the results maybe didn't do justice as to how well he was playing. He, uh, I commented Fourth on two of his matches break, after I got dumped out of second round. Um, it had to do him a bit for the team, and uh, <laughs> uh, we watched him twice, and he, he he was breaking really well, was the main thing that you kind of notice. Uh, again, as he crunches them, I, mean, I don't know if he's made a ball, though, has he? Oh, it's just about made it yellow, that's crucial. Um, but yeah, he, he looked to be playing as well as anybody. Um, but key, really, was that he was breaking so well. Yeah, it is a good break in the end, but isn't it amazing? We s it's an objectively good break because of how much movement's on the balls and how many are, are flying around, but he so nearly didn't make a ball in, in its entirety. Which extension extension calls. It's, it's no a doubt a source of great frustration most of the time for yeah. Gareth Hibbert. It's just the, it's just the, um, it sums up Paul really in general. You, you, one ball is as good as five. You just want to make a ball off the break. You don't care if you make three, four, five. It doesn't matter. You just want to be at the table first. And as you can see there, this would have been rolling in now to go 3-1. And that last ball rolling looks like this. There's every chance now this is going to be two each. But still quite a bit of work to do for Gareth. The... Uh, Yellow tucked up next to the black is, is only really got one pocket he can play that into. So um, doesn't need to dislodge anything, but work to do. Yeah, you can see even with that shot that Gareth's queuing pretty confidently. Yeah. I don't think he, he's the kind of uh, queuist or that ever struggles with that. You know, he's a very accomplished snooker player. Um, one four seven man for the snooker. Um, actually, very good at darts. Um, might be worth mentioning. I've had a few, uh, had a few legs of darts with him um, a little while ago, and uh, I sort of fancied myself a little bit. And he was, he was miles better than me. Just all about the hand eye. Really is. Yeah, I asked him. He, he's had ten dart legs. I mean, he really is that good. Crikey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not surprised because I think we only we only played five six legs or so, but he had a 180, and um, yeah, just one of those one of those annoying people that are good at everything. <laughs> yeah, I think everyone. Oh, has a he's just of those. missed that yellow, and that's a, that's a bad miss from Gareth. He wanted to be a bit closer to it, um, which did make that missable, but uh, it's st still a shot you expect them to get eight or nine times out of ten. Yeah, and you can see Ryan McCarthy up out of his seat like he had springs in it. Yeah, like a whip it. He couldn't wait to be back at the table. He'll feel like he owes himself this one after that bad miss in the previous frame from himself. And I can't imagine he'll need to use his extension in this one. He won't, but I think I don't think the do, do, do the two reds next to each other go? Could he I think if he gets low enough down there he can it was, it was the first thing he looked at, wasn't it, when he came to the table, he wanted to have a look at those two reds. Yeah, we'll Just see from it. this shot. So if he, if he plays it gently, we know it goes. Uh, otherwise, we'll see him play it at pace and, and try and disturb those two reds. The shot clock is ticking. He's more than used to it now after getting to the very end of the Champions Cup. And a couple of games here in the Premier League already. That beeping sound doesn't trouble Ronan McCarthy. And judging from how he's approaching this one, Looks like that goes pretty well. It needs to come away from the side cushion, and it hasn't. There's your lifeline for Gareth Hibbert. Now the obvious thing for him to do. 
is, is to play the red into the bottom left, come up the right hand side of the table and take the one down the cushion. But his other option, uh, as you see him do now, is to leave himself the double. Now, you, 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 one thing you like, th this red is very close to that cushion, so you just want to be wary of the double kiss. Nah, he's played it really well. Perfect. Made that look so easy. Yeah, it is. It is one of the shots that sometimes gets overappreciated in pool because so many players are such fantastic doublers. But that was more difficult than most, and certainly more difficult than Ronan made it look. That, but he moves into a three-one lead. Absolutely merciless from Ronan McCarthy. A finish that really, really. Just let us all know exactly how he's approaching tonight. He means business. After those two bad results, Ronan is back on the march in the Premier League. Television right now for about four minutes. And we will find out if he can finish the job after this.
Well, welcome back to Solly Hull and the IPA Pool Premier League here on Free Sports. Fifth Ren McCarthy, McCarthy currently taking break. on Gareth Hibbert. He's going along pretty nicely as well. Three frames already on the board for Ronan. And the Ulsterman, he's looking to secure his first point of the Premier League. He'll do that if he wins the next frame. One point guaranteed with four on the board, which will guarantee him a draw at the very least. Yeah, and uh, that's probably the best break he's hit in the Premier League so far. Yeah, the, the white threatened to go in a two or three times. Uh, other balls threatened to knock it in, but um, he's got away with it, made a ball. I say, don't care how many you make, as long as you make one. Yellows are open. Um, reds, reds are nice, but he's not on an easy opener on reds. The table probably looks a, a little bit easier than it is, to be honest. You know, the white ball hasn't come out particularly kindly for him. I think if he was smack bang in the middle of those reds, he'd be halfway onto the black ball one now. But yeah, I think, I think we're looking at him take the, the cut red into the middle. He's played it well. Almost tied the red up with the black, but he's got away with it. Had to trust the luck a little bit there. There's nothing he could do. Just had to make sure of the pot. He's just going to rest into the black. Doesn't want to put the black too. Doesn't want to put the black on the cushion. Doesn't want to get tied up with it on the way back out. And I think he has. Yeah, I think in an ideal world, his next ball would have been the one that he's closest to. Bottom left of the screen as we look at it. It, it would, yeah, because it would have opened the pocket up for the black as well. So good pop from Ronan. Yeah, it wasn't the half, was it? Well, we've seen him miss a, a couple of shots early on in, in this match, despite the scoreline, and might have just been feeling a little bit of trepidation taking that on, but that just shows really the quality of Ren McCarthy. That's how he usually approaches pots like that. Yeah, he's just got so much experience. He's uh, he's probably played a th thousands and thousands of recovery pots over the years, so he needs to just hold up there with a the cue ball. Oh, I think he's just about perfect. But only just. I don't know, he's having a look. It's close, isn't it? I think one of the issues that he's got is yeah, he doesn't get much angle. He might have to pop this quite thick. He sees playing at the side as well, just to Yeah, and he could only just pop that because if he if he was cleaner, he had a cleaner strike on it, he would have screwed up table, but he just had to play that with a bit of side to uh to, to turn it over. Lovely shot, would have liked a bit more angle than what he's got. Would have liked the cue ball to be maybe a ball, a ball's rolls worth closer um, or further away from the um, the middle pocket. But I think, don't be trying to be too clever, just leave yourself a shot on the black. Yes, that's about as well as he could have done from there. Yeah, he jammed it in, didn't he? It's tough, but at 3 1 up, I fancy him to get it to secure his first point in the IPA Pool Premier League. Oh, didn't even touch the size. What a shot that was. Yeah, brilliant stuff from Ronan McCarthy. And that may just, in his own mind, just be a little bit of a release of a bit of pressure and a bit of tension. Yeah, and his uh, second breaking dish of the match as well, which... Uh, as we mentioned earlier, with his break not being the strongest point, is uh, will be really pleasing for him. And we mentioned right at the top of the of the match just how dangerous a player he is and how his form has been fantastic this year in particular. Won the Welsh Professional in February, as you can see, uh, third down they got to the final of the Champions Cup, which was an incredibly difficult competition to go deep in, as as I think everyone knows. But I was chatting to to Ronan just before we came on air and. He was saying the, the weekend he's just had in Coventry was one of the worst weekends he can remember in in his entire career, which I said to him, well, you've had quite the career, Ronan. That's some statement, he guess. It was that bad. So <laughs> I think he's just wanting to, uh, to have a really good night tonight and forget all about it. Yeah, as we uh, see Gareth just making the black off the break, so they'll be re yeah, it's not. It's, it's strange to be to be around and not see, not see Ronan in a at least the quarterfinals. He's normally in the quarterfinals or one of the other events. Um, 
ultra consistent. So, yeah, it will be disappointing for him, but kind of just shows, kind of just shows the way uh, uh, his sort of mental resilience really that he can come back and play play as well as he is do so, doing so far. Well, these are the tournament st statistics heading into uh, this match, as you can see. What we were talking about at the start of the match, Ronan really struggling off the break. He had six and only potted one ball off, uh, in his first couple of matches against Ben Sorry, Davis Ronan. and Mark Farnsworth. And when you're potting that few off the break, it is such a, a game changer well, to your opponent more than yourself. Yeah, you just you sort of feel like you're, you, you're handicapped almost, really. And uh, as we see Gareth make, a, make another ball off the break there, but as often tends to happen when you're chasing the game, I don't think they've come out great. You know, he would have loved to have just had a nice, easy finish, get his way back into the match. But I'll tell you what he would have loved is that red on the bottom pocket to have been nudged in by the yellow as well. He would have been thinking <laughs> exactly the same, yeah. Um, I think reds are still probably the colour. Um, his probably his biggest issue is his first ball. But I think he can just cut this one he's closest to in and uh, bring the other red out that's next to it. Thin cut, though. See, that's what he's looking at. Doing it with a lot of side as well. He need, doesn't need it to go safe. It's just about okay, actually. Um, that could have come out a lot worse, uh, although he is hampered queuing on this next uh, this next red. But all he needs to do is make the pot, and he's got easy position on the, the red closest to it. So shouldn't pose too much of a problem. of his moves here, just plotting his next four shots or so, which he will hope will take him to a 4-2 deficit as opposed to a 5-1 defeat. 5-1, I think I'm right in saying it's the most common scoreline we've seen so far in the Premier League, which when you consider <laughs> the quality of the players that are facing each other is quite remarkable in a way. Strange, really, yeah. It just goes to show that the, the variables in Paul and, and the way that he is kind of probably, to be honest, a, a bookie's dream, um, a bookmaker's dream, because you just there's three results and, and they're just it's just so unpredictable. You can look at it and go, oh, he was playing really well at the weekend. All of a sudden, one dry break later, he's three nil down. It's <laughs> like, how do you pick a winner? It's, <laughs> it's hard enough when you have a format like the World Championships where you have it in set play. And it's dragged over two hours. When it's over. You know, the best of eight legs, eight frames, I should say. It's it's nigh and impossible to predict. Oh. And, and that's what makes this so good to watch. Yeah, totally. I mean, the, the, the thing you don't want to see as, as any sports fan is, is one-sided. You know, it's, it's always good to have a Tiger Woods, for example, or, a, you know, a, a number one, a, 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 a someone that everybody uh, aspires to be. But is it by the same token, say, for example, when you're watching the darts and Phil Taylor used to be 11-3 up on people, just going through the motions. Do you know what I mean? I want to see him in a scrap. I want to see him struggling. I want to see him competing, really, you know. And um, good shot from Gareth there. I didn't realise it. Just from this overhead, it actually does look like a fairly easy pot into the middle pocket. So, oh, wow. Oh, well. You can't believe it. What's happened there? Well, let's have a look, shall we? It was, it seemed a fairly routine win here for Gareth. I don't think the ball's not curved away. He's just, he's essentially just missed it. There's, there's no. I, I think he's hit it a little bit, um, a little bit softer than he could have done. Played it a bit more tentatively as he, as he, than it, than he could have done. But uh, it was tight from the angle. So I, I did initially thought he'd probably play it into the corner. But then when you see it from the overhead, you think, oh, actually it does go. Ronan in here, and uh, he's not going to make any mistakes here. Yeah, that's the kicker, isn't it, for, for Gareth? He knows as soon as he misses that black, it's not only frame over, but it's match over. It had to go. And it hasn't. Ronan here is teeing off a practice session. And he will claim his first win of the Premier League season. 
And it's 5-1, appropriately enough, after losing his first two 5-1. Ronan McCarthy offsets one of those by getting his own 5-1 victory over Gareth Hibbert. That will make him feel a little bit better about his Premier League prospects. That's what they're fighting for. And these are the final match statistics. It was a much better match from Ronan McCarthy. Balls off the break, breaks and dishes. A couple of missed pots, which he will focus on a little bit and want to improve. But that's a, a far better performance from Ronan McCarthy. Yeah, and I think a little bit of a story told there by the fact that Gareth spotted 23 balls and, 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 only, and only won one frame. So, you know, he had chances in a couple of them. Uh, couldn't take them, and in this format, it uh, it can kill you. And it has. Ronan McCarthy wins his first Premier League match by 5-1. We still have plenty more to come, though, on Free Sports. Don't go anywhere.
Yeah, very warm welcome back to the Free Sports Premier League pool. These are the updated standings, and won't Ronan McCarthy be delighted about that? He moves off the bottom of the table, and he actually, in a, in a weird way, joins Gareth Hibbert exactly on not only points, but also on frames difference as well. Funny how these things work out, isn't it? He's uh, right back in contention, and he'll look to get himself even further in contention with a game against Liam Dunster to round off the evening. Gareth Hibbert will be on after our next game as Jimmy Carney has a double header. He starts with Liam Dunster before taking on the recently defeated former world champion. There is Liam Dunster, the Champions Cup winner on the left. Jimmy Carney on the right, deep in thought. And uh, someone else who's deep in thought is Dan Davey, who's uh, been focusing on on our last match and these two are, are players who we expect a lot of big things from Liam Dunster in particular is the Champions Cup champion which is a competition I know you played in and a competition that I know you thought was incredibly difficult to win and he's the one who came out top of the pile yeah and I think um, composure was a huge part of that he uh, he really has probably probably got the best temperament in the game I mean he literally sits there like a I mean look at him now you know he's literally sat there like a I mean, it's almost as if it's deliberate you know he, sit, he, 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 he sits the same way every time at all times you wouldn't know whether he's 3-0 up or 3-0 down ever um, and that's a real strong point of his I think Jimmy likes to give off that persona that he uh, that a bit, but he's, he's, a, he's a little bit more emotional I think um a, a bit more hit and miss, I would say. At his best, you you you, you, you can't throw, really beat Jimmy him. Carly you know, he's he's that good. But well, he um, proved that in the, in the qualification for this tournament, didn't he? He came through a qualifying tournament that included the likes of Simon Ward, John McAllister, yeah. and uh, Jack Whelan, and was unbeaten all day. He was unplayable. It's exactly what he was. He just he just turns up some days, and you just think, wow, who is this guy? Do you know what I mean? He he, he is like a machine, and. Um, yeah, and, uh, and other days he's he, he's not so good, but that's that's probably probably why he's one of the most exciting players to watch. But Liam, on the other hand, is uh, you just know what you're going to get with him. Yeah, it, it can be. I don't know this from speaking to to Liam and a couple of his mates as well. Almost a point of uh, of mockery for for Liam is his, his mannerisms and his routines around the table. He does take his time, but. The thing is, is he does that because it's so unbelievably effective for him. Uh, he doesn't care how he wins. Yeah, exactly. He's just one of those uh, natural-born winners, I think. And um, it's easy to forget how young he is as well. Yeah, I think just 23, and um, he's um, he's quite interesting. We mentioned about Gareth Hibbert being uh, having a 10 dart leg before uh, playing darts, and, and Liam's. Just hit the cushion there with a the cue ball. Uh, Liam's also one of those. He's, he's, he's. You wouldn't believe the things I've written down. You would not <laughs> believe. Right. Come on, there, Dad. I know you. I know you've got your stats lined up for you. What, what can you? What can you tell us? This is ridiculous. You've been our roving reporter tonight. Right, he's only 23. Yeah. Um, the Taekwondo European champion at under 14s level. Yeah. So you can't even have a go because he'll knock you out. Um, <laughs> Bowls, bowls, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit of a bruiser. Plays bowls, right? So it's bowls, Scottish under 17s champion. I believe that was indoor and outdoor. Although I don't think there's any difference. But Liam almost uses taekwondo. He, he said indoor and outdoor. I said same thing, mate. Honestly, I thought the black belt was going to come out on me. He wasn't happy. <laughs> he wasn't happy. So yes, but bowls, Scottish under 17s champion. Um, and he just played chess for county as well. Just the county standard, just as a probably you know they were probably short or something and he filled in. Just ridiculous. Twenty-three years old. What what what, what isn't he good at? That's a really good question. <laughs> uh, that's yeah. that's really interesting. It's, it's, I think the most interesting thing about that for me is as we see Jimmy at the table here with a good chance actually to to make his mark on this match is is the chess because that's very much. A thinking man's game. You can almost see that in Liam when he when he plays. Is he's got that sort of one chess like mentality about every shot. One step ahead of you. One step ahead of the table. You know, kn knows what he's doing next. He's always very calculated. 
Um, as you see a miss there from Jimmy and he's he just had to play a, a, a bit of pace to try and get the white where he wanted it and just made the pot a little bit more difficult. Here he comes. I don't know whether he's going to drop kick you or <laughs> checkmate you. <laughs> um, yeah. I think you need to be careful, mate, because if he hears any of this, he'll be, he'll be straight in. Yeah, but he can't, though. He's, he's, he's too nice as well. He's also a nice guy. He's one of those students, he probably, you know, he's a taekwondo, but he never went around giving it the big one at school. And I bet nobody knew. Maybe just that one kid. <laughs> now, talk to me about this table, because there's yellows. He's got his issues here, because the red of, of Jimmy's that's over that pocket is giving him a problem. Where, it is. Where, where's he going to look to solve it? Well, uh, the, if, if he had a better angle... Um, he could have played in behind the two red yellows on the right-hand side of the cushion, uh, right-hand side of the table. That needs to just hit. He did, but I don't think he, he was he wasn't far enough back out. So, in an ideal world, if he could have been over on the right-hand side of the table below this right middle pocket, he could have perhaps played one of these yellows off of the red to open the pocket. But as it is, he just played a containing safety. And Jimmy still got game here because Liam wanted to push that yellow further up the table and uh, he didn't quite get it as far up as he wanted. Yeah, that red very much goes, doesn't it? He needs to be precise, but it, it does go. Yeah, he, he's got a margin. He, he wants to be in line with where, say, for example, the black spot is. That would be his perfect area or circle. Uh, but needs to leave himself a good angle on the next red to make sure he can get there. He doesn't want to be taking off three or four cushions to get there. And I think that is absolutely perfect. You can see there the small white cross that depicts where the black goes. That's just about where Jimmy Carney wants to be. He could get himself into all sorts of bother if he gets it he wrong. To slow up. I think that's perfect though. Well, you can also... You said round about the black spot. If he's in line with it, same difference. Yeah, in line exactly with it is fine. Yeah, that's exactly where he's left himself. That's there. It's nicely done. I'd love to be a little bit further away from the cushion, but um, I'd say an eight, eight or a nine out of ten. These, these aren't these aren't nice queuing off the cushion, but I expect him to get it. It's yeah, there. He does, and that puts him one no up, and a frame which really could have gone either way in the end has found itself in the lap of Jimmy Carney, who's yet to register his first win in the Premier League. He did have a really entertaining draw with Ben Davis on the opening night of the Premier League here in Solly Hole before getting a, a bit of a pasting from Mark Farnsworth, who is in a rather, well, he was in a rather pasting mood <laughs> on his first Just night of the Premier League. Just his ruthless self, really. And, uh, yeah, so he's still after his first victory. would be a little bit of a, of a fillip for him if, it, if that first victory did come against the, uh, the reigning defending Champions Cup winner. Jimmy Carney does an awful lot of coaching uh, for anybody that didn't know. He's, um, I think he's, he's effectively got two jobs pretty much uh, and you know, part-time coach and um, but he's fully booked. I was, I was speaking to him a little while what, ago. He wanted some sessions. <laughs> 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 Look, I know the weekend didn't go well for you, Dan, but come on. No, uh, he listens to Shaking Stevens. I couldn't spend much time with him. He's, um, yeah, no, he's, uh, yeah, spends a lot of time around Paul week to week, you know. Um, he's never away from the game or away from the table, uh, albeit maybe he has a week or two where he doesn't practice an awful lot, but he's always around the game, um, be it that is a, 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 I suppose, a source of income to an extent to him, so... Uh, was was contemplating kind of quitting uh, a couple of years ago um, but I think that was just boy who cried wolf really someone gave him a cuddle and now he's back and we mentioned the, the military like precision of Liam Dunstan that's Second another one of his uh, quirks he always, always check the pack before he breaks he wants every single ball to be touching which of course, is, as a as a player, is that is totally is right. Yeah, it is. Um, I think it's more uh, 
maybe he'll look at the pack and then he'll decide whether he's going to hit the the, the, the left-hand side or with break from the right-hand side. I don't really know. I think probably be a good question to ask him actually. What you know, what are you playing at? <laughs> is it just is he trying to annoy his opponent? You know, is he is he you know? It's be annoying knowing you can't say anything because he's a black belt. I'd be annoyed about this one because he's actually, if you look at the spread of the balls, had a really good break, but nothing's gone down. Nothing's gone down, and Jimmy's, um, Jimmy, he's just run slightly too far there. He wanted to take this yellow that he's closest to now as his next ball, and uh, he's just away from it, so he's going to have to kind of go a route about these clearance in, the, 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 this clearance that he didn't want to initially. He played that nicely, though, and it, he's on the exact of the yellow he wanted to be on. So he's in recovery mode already, really, but um, they're all there. And yeah, it was, it was a slightly sloppy start actually from Jimmy because it was the balls were both quite close to each other. The pot was pretty routine. He would have been irritated that he didn't make his life easier with that first shot. Yeah, you see, they're just kind of that's a brilliant shot. That is brilliant because now he can just he's got the nat triangle to float back up towards in between the red and yellow. Doesn't want to be straight. Anything apart from straight is perfect. Uh, but he's got the perfect angle to come up table now and take that and then naturally come down table for the other two. So had a bit of work to do. He's, he's done oh, anything but straight. He's close to being straight, but would have liked more angle. I think his ideal would have been to be, to be closest to the cushion rather than having to bounce it off with this next shot. But... I think he's okay. Let's see here. Ah, uh, we've got a fire alarm going. Fire alarm sounds off in that. Jimmy's not happy. He thought he just um, time fouled. <laughs> and uh, looks like that is uh, that is now sorted. The shot clock time did running. stop for the yeah. duration that the fire alarm was with us, and it now rolls again for Jimmy Cardi. Right? Now has to deal with an altogether different sort of noise, but he's he played the shot eventually, and we <laughs> look to be all okay. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't happy, was he? Crikey. Well, actually, from, from Jimmy's perspective, he, he's handled that really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the first thing he looked at was the time clock. He thought he time failed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, blimey. The so yellow's just come out. Uh, the white's just come out far enough. And um, he needs to cue this well because he can't just drop this in. So, well, he's looking at going down table. Two ways. You can, you can just screw this back. Uh, a little, although you need to cure it well. The other option is to just top it through, side and back cushion. Leave yourself on this bottom cushion for a cut into the middle. So he's just looking, he's eyed up both now. Let's see what he's going to do. He's topping it through. Just about got there. Is the, has the white gone far enough? I think it has just, hasn't it? Well, he's got he's got the backup of going up to the top of the table if he needs to. He won't want to. I think he's playing it into the middle. He is. That was nicely done. Jimmy it was indeed. And Jimmy Carney has raced here into a into a two 0 lead. And appropriately enough, he's well, he's playing like he's on fire. Maybe that's what <laughs> set the alarm off. <laughs> Jimmy Carney. Oh, off. that is cheese. That is. Off I like a bit of that. That's off good. To a flyer. As we take a reminder of how Liam Dunster has gone on so far, and he's actually uh, played exactly the same results as, as Jimmy so far. This will separate Dunster and Jimmy Carney unless it ends as a four-all draw. He lost 5-1 to Gareth Hibbert, who we've already seen tonight, and had a really entertaining draw with Greg Marsh. Uh, four-all, that one finish. Yeah, and it, interesting, lost the first match to Gareth 5-1, and he was 3-1 down in the next match as well. So really up against it, but went 4-3 up. Um, just testament to his temperament, really, to, to get himself away with a point. As we saw in the Champions Cup, you never ever write off Liam Dunster when he's down a few frames. No, semis and final, wasn't it? Three, th was it 4-1 down in each? I think you're right, yeah. I he think. might have even been 5-1 down in one of those. Black might go in, it does. We'll have a re -rack. And again, second time this evening. We don't see it often. Yeah, let's take another look at it. He, I'm not sure he potted another ball from a very brief memory. Uh, the no, he did pot a yellow in the middle. Ah, there it goes, just in after the black. Yeah. But, uh, 
here we take a look at what Jimmy's been up to in the recent weeks and months. And you can see he's a pretty regular appearance maker in the latter stages of competitions. Had a good run in the Scottish Professional. It's the final, as you can see, of the Premier League qualifier where he beat Jack Wheel. And that's probably the standout tournament performance from Jimmy in the last 12 months or so. And got to the quarterfinal the event there where he lost to Ben Davis. But what really what really stood out in all that was the qualifying tournament he played when he was just unbeatable all day against some serious top caliber opposition. Yeah, and, and that's just Jimmy all over. You know, he could a um, couple of first round losses and all of a sudden he find, you know, he just, just turns up and blows everybody away. He's, he's one of those kind of players, really. Um, it's good to have a different mix. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, I suppose if everybody was the same, it'd be boring, wouldn't it? Yeah, you're not wrong there. He's had a good break. The black again was nearly on its way into the middle pocket, but quite a few balls down, and by that nature, by virtue of that, I should say, he's got a couple of options here. Looks like yellows is the pick. He's going to go yellows. He's opened them up nicely. Um, just one obstacle now between, between Jimmy and a 3-0 lead uh, is the yellow at the top of the table. He may even play to get onto it next. Um, just slightly hampered queuing over this yellow into the bottom left corner, but a little bit of stun um, is going to bring him naturally over to the right hand side of the table. And if you can get good position on this, it, it is effectively frame over. It's a huge, huge shot for Jimmy. He needs to slow down. You can almost see it in, the yeah. <laughs> his, in his body language. Body language stop, yeah. stop, stop. He's not happy. Wait. It does go, but it's awfully difficult and tricky especially with where the white is in relation to the cushion I think he's not made it easy for himself saved a little bit by the fact that it's I don't think it's an enough um, cutting this into the uh, the bottom right corner so if he can just make the pot um, he's even going for it he's going for the long one he's going for the long one and then he's going to have to come back up table well, this isn't easy either Played really Just well, up really well. It's a great shot, especially queuing off the cushion. So it's, it's a really, really good shot. And um, if he can just complete the job, still needs to. To th this frame's not over yet. He needs to. He's got a fairly big margin of error to land in. But uh, oh, I think he's done the same. Now he's uh, no, he can pot this. Um, but the red. And there's only one red. Um, it is going to be a potential problem. So we may see him dig down into the white ball um, and and screw try and screw up the centre of the table. Yeah, doesn't want to be going near that red if he doesn't have to. Yeah, the red at the bottom of the table is one he could end up behind. And he's avoided it. Oh, he needs to flick the... Oh, that's come out lovely. Ooh, oh, wow, no. Threatened. No, what's happened? Oh, no, <laughs> no, Jimmy. Just as, just as that ball settled, he's going to have to swerve this. Oh, no. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Jimmy Carney. Well, the showman there had to put out all the stops <laughs> when it looked like it was the simplest solution ever. He played the final yellow really, really well. And just as the ball settled, just almost fell into a pothole, didn't it, next to the red? I, I tell you, it's the, amazing how often that happens. There is nothing easy about that. The swerve shot is so much more difficult when you're really close to the object ball. Uh, that that was that was a really really good shot from Jimmy. Yeah, made it look very easy when actually it was a terrifically difficult difficult shot. This is uh, Liam's recent history, and uh, this is what he's been up to recently. Yeah. Got to the Scottish Professional final, quarterfinals in the Scottish Open and the English Open. Obviously won the Champions Cup, which we've uh, alluded to before. We won't mention the English Open quarterfinal, Dan, or will we? What's that? Um, I can't <laughs> see. What, what does that say? Um, two set. Oh, oh yeah, because I got the seven. Yeah, no, fair enough. Yeah, you did indeed. Well, yeah. you're in a pretty, you're in a pretty privileged position this year to have been one of the men who's managed to beat Liam in, in, yeah. his, in his real run of form. What what does it take to to Fourth beat Liam? Liam I know he's quite a different player to you stylistically as well. Yeah, um, he, he's dry breaks help a lot. Um, I remember the match was was you know I was I took a quite an early lead for for one I think and 
It wasn't him playing badly. It was kind of, you know, run of the ball does play a big part and dry breaks, really, as we've just seen another one from Liam. Uh, but once he gets his hand on the table, you know, I mean, he's one of those players that sometimes I'm very guilty of it. Um, subconsciously relax when you're, when you're 5-1 up and 6-2 up and against him. I don't think I've ever tried as hard at 6-2 up on a, on a fairly simple finish because you just know what he's like. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, br bring that bring that back up there if you want. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> we might do. Let's see if we've got the tape somewhere. Yeah. Either way, uh, Jimmy Carney is going to make Liam play a shot here. The we might have our first real tactical frame of, of the evening here because neither set is easy. No, and um, Jimmy, Jimmy kind of doing a Liam to Liam, if that makes sense, because of all the people that you see play safe at the start of a frame and let their opponent go game, it's often it's often Liam doing that when he's three and up, and you know he looks at a finish and says, right, well they're not easy, so I'm three and up. I'm going to let you chase, but roles reversed. And if Liam is to chase this one on yellows, he's got work to do. The yellow next to the black is a real problem. It needs to be moved, or balls around it need to be moved, and likewise at the top of the table. I think there what we've just seen is, is Liam choosing a colour set just to really plot out this next battle. Yep, and... Um, if you if you were to have your money on this frame you'd probably say it's a fairly even table at the moment but most people would make Liam favourite in a frame like this um, almost everybody in fact would probably make Liam favourite in a frame like this but Jimmy knows what he's doing he's, um, he's an England international you get a lot more one frame pull you get a lot more tactical frames in the, in the one framers seem to just be a little bit more edgy They're, they, they are they are quite a lot quite a lot they're, they're, they're very different to, to, to playing in a singles match. So, you know, Jimmy knows what he's doing. And don't forget that just as we see that last shot from Liam, he couldn't just roll up to that yellow. Black ball rules do dictate that every player must hit the cushion after contact, uh, unless the ball is potted. So it eliminates the sort of directly negative play of, of rolling up in, in safety battles. It doesn't. And interestingly, the, the, the IPA now has a rule where you have to, three, off of the break, it's a three-point rule. So three balls have to either be potted. So you get a point for a pot, and you get a point for coming past the centre of the table, the centre line. And um, the IPA adopts a, a three-point rule. Um, and it wasn't because of Liam at all but he he was no 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 but he'll be you know because thing to be proud of in a way he's such a good tactician that sometimes in matches previously he, he if he's behind or even just from the very start if he wants to get under someone's skin or he or he feel more to point if he feels like that's going to give him the advantage he would um he would do a tactical break where he would just um a gentle punch into the pack uh, uh, three balls, li well, two balls. Funny enough, he would he would often make a ball into the middle pocket. Another one would come out. The rest of the pack would stay quite tightly packed, so there was no break in dish on. So what he would do then, he'll he'll, he'll pot red or he'll play safe, and he he's a master at the tactical game. So obviously, as a, as a tournament though, you've got a bit of a dilemma because uh, if a player that good is winning matches by doing that, tournaments can overrun. So we now have a three-point rule, which uh, a lot of you, you haters, because everyone, everyone hates a successful person, don't they, to an extent. <laughs> a lot of you haters thought, oh, that, well, Liam, Liam won't be any good when he, with that three. Now he can't tap the break, and uh, well, did he prove them wrong? Didn't he just? But he wasn't the only one. There were, there, there were a few others that used to do it as well. Um, no, of course. And the thing is, it, it wouldn't necessarily even be, be a, a personal issue. It's, the, the IP is constantly looking for ways to to make the game more accessible to to new followers and stuff like that. And that's one of the things that can help. Yeah, it's just tactical. Anyone that knows the pool, um, I, I I I don't like to play that way, but actually it's fairly enjoyable now and again to have a little tippy tappy frame. 
Um, Jimmy doesn't like it, obviously. It's just like I'm <laughs> slamming into them. Um, but that was always that was always the option, though. That was the right thing to do because he's, he's got balls down here that he can always land on. So this was his free go at getting his bad reds out. Yeah, Liam's last shot before Jimmy uh, potted that red with the aid of the black actually merely meant he could have gone game after the next visit because the yellows were all there for him. Now, after that last visit from Jimmy, it's definitely no longer the case. And the pendulum swings back and forth. Yeah, but 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 Liam there was kind of wrestling that he, he was he was gaining the advantage. He was he was he was playing chess. Do you know what I mean? But but J Jimmy kind of was forced to do what he did there. Um, if the yellow that he's just um, see the yellow next to the pocket he's just tried to cover there. Uh, if that didn't go up in front of this red, it, w it would have been frame over. So he kind of got lucky to get both the reds out in one sense, but. For the yellow to then block the other red into the bottom left corner was actually a, a tad unlucky. Oh, the back is very much to the wall here. <coughs> and that's a very clever shot. Yeah, very much so. And, um, with these tactical frames, you, you want to be the person that's got more balls on the table, ironically, because you've got you've got more control in that way, in that sense. Might sound a little bit stupid, but the last thing you want to be doing when you when you've got a pocket or two covered each is is you don't want to only have three or four balls left. You know, you want seven. You don't want six, you want seven left. Yeah, it's almost paradoxical way of thinking at times extension called. but as Liam takes his extension Jimmy already using his it's a it's an interesting way of thinking in black ball pool, in black ball pool no player ever expects to miss a pot what they want is the opportunity to make those pots full stop and the most important thing in a frame like this is he's always having territory how I'd describe it. Yeah, uh, certainly a, a great way to liken it is to a game of chess. You know, he can. Okay, I'll bring it. I'll bring one of my bad yellows out to make that potable. What I can't do when I do that is leave Jimmy an angle on his red to pot one and then play the skill shot into that top right corner pocket. So you're not just thinking about what you're going to do with your ball. You're also thinking about what you what you can't leave Jimmy on his next visit. I just wonder if he did leave that. Because I think Jimmy was probably going for the pot there. I think he was because he could then have played the one into the middle now and um, he, he would have been able to give himself an angle uh, to, to, to go into that red and yellow because it is a dead set plant as well. Um, probably a fairly decent chance that you're going to be on the red afterwards too. So um, Liam isn't as much of a favourite as you might think he is. Last thing he wants to do is pop that yellow. Oh, ho, ho. that's uh, any emotion from him? Oh, scratch of the head. It's about as much as you're ever going to get. Yeah. He's thinking there's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> but he can he can just put this yellow in front of it now as well. Um, but to be honest. he likes it I don't think I don't think Jimmy can get through the gap can he he's just trying to have a look I, it would be a very very similar shot to the one that potted the black for Jimmy in, in the last frame I think if he was to sneak it around but the, I mean the tariff of this is high wow couldn't quite oh, okay. see enough of it well, I'm just surprised he got through the gap. I thought if he's going through the gap and it could, he could pot it, he'd probably pot it and try and get the white out. But he could obviously only just see it enough to, to, to roll it into the cushion. And now, now he really has got um, he really has got the upper hand in this frame. Yeah, it's worth pointing out. Uh, Jimmy wasn't trying to pot that red. He was just taking full control of the top bit of the table. And he might force Liam here. To play the skill shot. To play this skill shot. He's left himself dead straight. And there is an element of skill to the skill shot. It isn't leaving yourself a bit to luck, but there is a technique. 
yeah you want to you want to hit the uh, cue ball low fairly low and then that kind of almost in a domino effect puts top spin into the yellow just about got their great shot from them yeah so the bottom spin almost acts as a um, as a, as, a, as a domino to give the the it has that domino effect to give the the object ball top spin and obviously imagine if you hit a normal ball with top spin the the, the, the ball then follows through so um, you can play them plain ball but it is easier if you can get bottom spin on the uh, on the white and it almost narrows a potting margin to the width of a ball because it has, it has to be so perfect, dead yeah, straight. that's the other element. You have to hit it pretty much. Um, you have to pot that ball right in the middle of the pocket because y you can't just play the plant. If you're only hitting the ball half ball, it's just going to wobble in the jaws. You need to hit that that, that second ball dead centre and then um, and then it makes the, makes the score shot a lot easier. Yeah, sometimes they can look very easy, but they are almost by definition always pretty tough and Liam's run into a little bit of trouble here yeah he was um, I don't think he had the natural angle to just float up table in between the red and yellow obviously obviously you're going to want to play the yellow into the bottom right corner but he didn't quite have the angle to do that obviously so he's tried to stun down table towards the jaw towards the jaw of the top right hand corner pocket um, and he's just come up short well this would be a champagne shot and it wasn't near. But that was where he was at. He had to take that risk. There was no other real benefit to any other shot. As mentioned in this frame, balls on the table are an advantage. And yeah, and Jimmy now with his one free shot and uh, one visit. You'll see him just put this red into a even easier position than what it's in now and just make this finish... Um, even easier than what it was and I'll be very surprised if this doesn't go 4-0 to Jimmy in, a, in probably about a minute's time. Yeah, it wasn't an easy finish for Liam. It no, it wasn't, wasn't, but it tends to be that way when you're 3-0 down. I say it all the time, but it's true. You, you, the amount of times you break at 3-0 up and they come out absolutely lovely and you think, oh, blimey, these are, these are embarrassingly easy. You're 3-0 down pop four balls off the break and you wedge to a yellow and you can't see a first ball you know it's just the poor god's way of punishing you and the last thing that Liam wants after having his own sort of difficulties really in this match is to run into Jimmy Carney who's playing very well can't really think of anything Jimmy's really done wrong in this match he has played really, really well, Jimmy. He, he he's looks like he's on one of those days. He's the kind of guy that you, uh, you'd you probably want to back him in the second match after seeing the way he's played in the first match. You know, he's one of those streaky players, and when he starts playing well, he tends to carry on. Well, here you see the, the match statistics. Liam has had his chances. His, uh, his dry breaks are causing him a bit of trouble. Jimmy, by contrast, is flying. He leads Liam Dunster, the Champions Cup champion, by four frames to nil. Liam Dunster still after his first victory in this competition. That won't change. Jimmy Carney is guaranteed a point. Can he secure the win? We'll find out after the break.
a very warm welcome back to Solly Hull, to the IPA Pool Premier League here on Free Sports. It's Jimmy Carney taking on Liam Dunster. And we may not be back with this match for very long. As you can see, Jimmy Carney, four to the good, four to the good, I should say, has already secured his first point of the night. Needs one more frame to claim all three. And like we mentioned earlier, I'll be keen to get the job finished now because um, we, we've seen many, many times uh, on, on, on the TV at Champions Cup um, just how capable Liam is of, of turning over a, um, a deficit. So Jimmy would be keen to, to finish these here and now. He's made a ball. Um, there's balls in the open. It may not be the easiest finish ever, but, um, but they're all there. And uh, there's a good chance for Jimmy. Extension yeah, he's called his extension. Just want to have a look at this. I just wonder if he might well play a plant to the bottom left of the table here. Because I think the reds are, the, are probably the ball, but they're not that easy. Or at least, well, it looks like that's what he's playing. Yeah, the couple of plants he could he could also have played the plant into the um, to the right middle. I think that's just about okay. If that would have just carried on running anymore. That would have been a bit of trouble for Jimmy, but he can just about. He, he may well, we may well see him take it now. The um, red over that corner pocket that he's just played. Uh, maybe not. Might leave it till last. Oh, that's a nice nudge. That is a nice nudge. That has opened the frame right up, and I, I think that's over now. I think he's over. He's got the simplest of plants. He didn't play to cannon that in the way that he did, not exactly like that. And he has landed absolutely perfect on this. What would have been a tricky plant into the middle is, is now quite easy. You can almost, you almost saw, didn't you? His eyes quite almost literally light up when he realized <laughs> how he'd come out of that. Do you know, he doesn't blink. Look at him. Blink for us, Jimmy. He doesn't. I've asked him before, and he, he doesn't really understand that he does it. You know, I'm asked, Jimmy, do you actually blink at all? No, I don't know. I don't, do, do I? I don't. Know. I'm just in the zone. I'm just in, okay. Don't your eyes get dry? You know. Oh, I've, I, I'm so glad you you've taken on our role of an official roving reporter, Dan, because you're asking all the right questions. Yeah. This uh, is a shot where he needs to get the white exactly right. Yeah, th this is this is match ball really because if he lands perfect and he, that's far from it. Um, it would have been match over. It, it it looked worse than it was. He needed to clip that thinner. If he did it thinner, he wouldn't have hit the yellow and he would have been much further up table. But first chance gone for Jimmy to win the match. And you wouldn't imagine that Liam Dunster will waste this opportunity. Four nil down back against the wall. This is where Liam Dunster can do some of his best work. We saw it in our free sports for much of the Champions Cup. And, and ironically, I've, I've just noticed as I put, I'm set doing the stats and, and I've put Jimmy down as his first missed part of the, uh, um, his, sorry, his second missed part of the match. And uh, Liam's only missed pot in the match was, was when he came cushion first. You know, it's all this match, this 4 0 scoreline has all just been about Jimmy getting in first. Um, Liam's dry breaks have had a lot to do with that as well. Everything to do with it, yeah. And, um, Jimmy had a, uh, a breaking dish for himself as well. So, one of those frames, Liam didn't even get to the table. So, you know, it's kind of gone against Liam, really. Yeah, it's, it's not as if he's, he's played badly by, you know, any stretch of the imagination. Jimmy, don't get me wrong, he's played well. Yeah, but Liam, Liam hasn't played 4 0 down bad. Do you know what I mean? He's just he's run out of position a couple of times. The odd safety, which isn't uh, up to his usual standards, but it's not like he's been missing balls left, right, and centre, you know. Well, he's only out is to claim one point. And as we've seen with the champion, with the Premier League table, it it does look like every point will be crucial. It's tight. They're all beating each other. And if you can avoid getting beat, sometimes the way the table's good looking, it really could be everything come the, come the final throws of this competition. It is, but I think when, if you've got victory there as well, with, with it being three points for a win like football and one point for a draw, 
if you're four three up, I mean that's a two point frame. You know, whereas four three down is a one point frame for you. So um, really is kind of a, you know nice to nice to get a draw if you can't, but if if, if you can't nick a win, obviously for Liam that's all he can aim for. But, but in Jimmy's terms of, of, of this match, for example, Dan is it almost becomes to use the tired football cliche six pointer in many respects because these two are exactly the same. So it's yeah. not just maybe one point gain for Liam, it's also stopping Jimmy going two points clear of him as well. A three? Well, yeah, three. three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Matt went to pieces there, but yeah, three. No, but yeah, three points clear. So well, that's a really good shot from Liam as well. That wasn't easy, especially not a 4-0 down. But yeah, it really is. You're exactly right, actually. I didn't think about that. But it's not It's not just the fact that he's gaining a point for himself. He's stopping Jimmy from getting three. And, and later on in, in six, seven, eight weeks' time, that could be cool. crucial his extension just wants to double check this black won't need the whole of this extra time but just wanted no further distractions there's a big shot and he nails it and he's got one on the board he is still massively up against it Liam Dunster but he's still in it and that is what Liam Dunster does so well it is and he just had to play a little little trace of left hand side there as well because the natural angle was probably going towards the middle, so it made the pot a smidgen more difficult than than it perhaps looked. Well, these are the tournament stats for the pair of them, and as you can see, both have struggled at times with the break. So this is before this match, isn't it? I think, and, and this is at the very start of this match. So. Oh you wow. can see there before before Jimmy um, before Jimmy came into this, he, he had struggled a little bit on the break, but actually, in this match, it's not caused him any issues. But also, from seven breaks, Liam's not been dry once. He's fouled from the break a couple of times, but so let's say from the other five breaks, hasn't hasn't had a dry break in in, in this. And then in this match, yeah. In Just goes to show how important the break is. Yeah, it's crucial. It we sound like a broken record, but it's um it's just fact that the break is the biggest shot in, in pool. It's the most important shot in pool. There is a luck element to it, but there are definitely certain players that break <coughs> better than others consistently. It's just all about getting that clean hit on that front ball. Um, and even when the, the good breakers is... As you as you say, even when they're not necessarily breaking at their best, it's, it's sort of easy to go. I, you know, not quite have the run of the balls there, but sometimes Sixth it can be a case of people quite timing it as well as they would Time normally. Running. You can you can see when when a break is done at its very best by one of the best in the game, it's inevitable that about two or three balls are, are going to go in, and that that's the ultimate, isn't it? That trying to hit that every single time. Yeah, and interestingly, Liam's one of the only players that breaks with his hand on the table. Likes to play it like a proper shot, rather than a, rather than a whack, you know, or a, 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 a slash. You, know, you see, he could be forgiven for seeing Ben Davis, our world champion. He looks like he's got the hump for the break. He doesn't even get down to the shot. He, he pretty much stands up and just wallops him. Uh, but he's got a great break. Um, One of the best around. Yeah, yeah, and and you don't win a world championships unless you've got a great break. I don't think because you're always going to come up against someone that that is breaking well and is getting a lot of call them aces you know like free freebies from the break um, but another dry one from Liam and uh, Jimmy's in again well he might not get a better chance 5-1 victory he might be in for another one it's tough this shot's going to be his first one if this comes out well that's a really good shot that is that is absolutely perfect from Jimmy now, whether or not he has a full pocket to play the red he's closest to into the middle uh, remains to be seen, but he's 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 played that as well as he could have played it, and it couldn't really have come out much better. It was a brilliant shot from Jimmy Carney, especially in the circumstances. It wasn't difficult. Oh, see, that was the problem. It wasn't easy, I was about to say, but that was his issue. He's now knocked that red safe. Yeah, he only had half a pocket to play that, and he didn't have a full pocket, so... Um, you, you, you don't <laughs> against Liam you don't want to miss two chances in a row to close the match out because you know sooner or later he's going to shut you out for a couple of frames you know we could well see roles reverse Liam breaks and dishes and Jimmy dry break and all of a sudden ten minutes later it's four each and, you, and, you, and you're two points short of what you thought you were going to have it's interesting there to see in the background Gareth Hibbert just breaking down 
<laughs> what's going on the table ever the uh, ever the fan of the sport as well as a player yeah surprised he wasn't throwing 180s <laughs> Still there for Jimmy, but he's got far more work now than he would have done if his red had gone in without any trouble. It, it, what's what's he going to look at here? Because he's got he's got to move the red on the cushion. You know, that was his, was his best chance doing it. Well, he, he's he's looking at playing double now because he's just nowhere near where he wanted to be. And oh my goodness! Well, oh my goodness! If that red goes past, and if it does, he hasn't got a full pocket. If that red goes past, it's going to be infuriating for Liam. Um, it's close, isn't it? It's impossible to tell for us from, from this angle. This but is why it's so tough to play. Oh, I don't think it goes. No, you can see from the little shrug there. If he's got, if it goes, he's only got, he's got 10% of that pocket tops. Surely that doesn't go. He hasn't hit it. He hasn't hit it. Oh, no, it just didn't go. He just didn't have enough. Yeah, he, was, he was hoping for the drop, but you can see where the reds ended up there. It just bounced straight off the jaw. It just didn't have the angle. It just, it just couldn't quite. It was, pro it probably wasn't impossible, but um, if anything, he's probably relying on a little bit of a, um, a drift towards the middle pocket or something. But, but the problem was, he couldn't really do much else. Yeah, he was hampered by that. He, he almost, a Sherman pulled off a real magic trick in pulling that frame out the bag but we saw it in the second or third frame didn't we when he, when he swerved around the around his last ball from so close to it it was one of the best shots you'll see it doesn't look anywhere near as difficult as it was but he played it really well and he's with the double that he played previously such a aggressive aggressive player other people wouldn't have even seen that shot but Jimmy's pulled a double out gone into his bad ball that was all going everywhere and Liam's heart would have been in his mouth in many ways, he was unlucky to leak to not leave a r the red after that double. Yeah, he was. He was unlucky. He, um, he was leaving it, of course, to chance. But he, he'd have felt after making the double and giving it a real go, he maybe deserved a little more out of it. I like to look at it as sometimes when you play a cannon, um, you, you know in your mind whether. So if you play it perfectly, you know whether there's going to be if the, if you play the shot ten times. It's probably going to come out nice eight or nine times. Sometimes you trust into luck. Sometimes you've got nothing to do. I mean, you, you'll go into the balls and you think, well, I've probably got a 20% chance of this coming out nice. I think that one was probably more of a 50 50. I just wonder if Liam's left himself a little shorter of where he wanted to be here. Yeah, he, he definitely wanted to play the yellow he's closest to next. Um, just wanted to be further over the table. I shouldn't really pose too many problems for him. That's nicely done. Well, Jimmy's just got to put this frame out of his mind. It was a chance to get his first three points of the competition. I don't think he's going to get it now, but next frame is his break, and this is essentially, in, in a lot of respects, you can just think of it as Liam holding throw, as it were. Yeah. Holding serve. I haven't quite got the, got the phrase holding break into the mainstream, but it's essentially what Liam's just done. We'll give it a go. <laughs> well, indeed. Well, it's 4-2, and even if it is a defeat, we've already seen plenty of drubbings handed out in the Premier League. It could come down to frames difference. Every one really is important. Any chance of blinking, Jimmy? No, no. 10, 15, 20. There here we go. Well done, Jimmy. Well done. Almost a dry eye. He'll be, well, you can see he's intensely focused. He'll be thinking all about this next shot, which is huge for him. A good break here, and he's off into the sunset with his first victory. Yeah, and he'll be feeling it more than Liam now, ironically, even though he's 4-2 up. But from 4-0 up, Seven frame, hasn't Jimmy had anything break, easy, two. but um, he base, has had chances. But he has had two chances. He played flawlessly to go 4-0 up. Missed a couple now, and if he if he sat down after this break, he'll be fearing the worst. This might be his last shot of the match. Okay, he was decided to put half the table in one shot. You can see, it just goes back to what we were saying, doesn't it? In in the last frame, that sometimes a break looks so good, 
you just wonder why that doesn't happen all the time. It is, yeah. And if you if you had the answer, you'd be you'd be a rich man. But Jimmy again, uh, probably similar to his other two clearances. Really, it's not it's not very easy. But um, the, I think this is the easiest one he's had so far. He's got one problem: yellow, obviously, at the bottom of the table. So needs to leave himself the right angle on either of these two balls to to get onto that. We're probably going to see you know, so left middle next, and it's this shot which is key. He may actually come down table for it now, depending on how much angle he's got and how he likes it. He really did crunch it. It's amazing how often you see it when a player really needs it. You pull a break out. It just makes you wonder how they ever didn't do that before. It, what I equate to is it's almost like when you watch a top striker in football take a penalty and they just absolutely thrash it into the top corner. Yeah. And it just yeah. makes you think, how does anyone ever miss a penalty when it's that yeah, simple? It does, yeah. This is the shot he's played, you're right. Doesn't want to stick to the red, that is, he, he'd have put it there with his hand if he could. Absolutely perfect. It should be Jimmy Home and Hosed it. Yeah, I may have lied to you a little bit there, he's slightly hampered queuing, so he wouldn't have put it there with his hand, but this should this should be fine. Ooh. Jimmy, what have you done? What have you done? He, he can't get position now if he plays this into the middle. He's got to take this up the top, has he? Surely. He has. If he misses this, I don't think he can get a frame. I don't think he can win in the next frame. It's, it's there. Shot. It's a great shot from Jimmy. Well, you knew it. As, as soon as he moved, he knew it. Yeah, it's a lot of courage shown there by Jimmy. It's a really good, really good last yellow. And it's a really, really good victory for the showman who takes his very first win of the Premier League of the yeah, Premier League competition and that will do in the world of good. He struggled a little bit on opening night and now he's handed up a really, really good win against one of the informed players in the world right now in Liam Dunster. It's a terrific performance from Jimmy Carney. He wins it 5-2 and he's up next as he takes on Gareth Hibbert. And I think the, uh, the momentum is with the Englishman and we'll see how that one lines up next.
very warm welcome back to the Free Sports Premier League of Pool. This is now how the table looks. And uh, Jimmy Carney will be pretty pleased with his recent victory over Liam Dunster. 5 2 was his win. Terrific performance over the Scott, and it does move him into the upper echelons of the Premier League table. Of course, with not every player playing every week, it's, it's a slightly false position with some more results to come, but you can only put yourself up there as Mark Farnsworth and Ben Davis will testify. And if Jimmy can get a win here against Gareth, he will really feel confident heading into his next fixtures in a few weeks' time. And uh, Gareth here, after a bit of a drubbing by Ronan, has, has had a really mixed bag of, uh, of performances. He's had one 5 1 win and two 5 1 defeats. Yeah, it's bizarre, but I think that's just the format, really. That's the format all over. And as you can see that on, on the table there, either one of these wins this and they go into to third place, I think. So it, it, there's a load of players bunched up already on four and three points. And um, it's already becoming like a crucial match in the, in the, in the tournament. Well, we've already seen these two players play already tonight, but if you're just joining us, Gareth on the left in the white, Jimmy in the red on the right. Yeah, Jimmy just seeing if the uh, yellow can reach his hand before he gets his hand out of the way. He does that all. He stays down on the shot. He stays down on his lag. You see on the last time he did it as well, that the, the white nearly almost got to his Q-tip before he did it. It's uh, just a just a Jimmy-ism. Yeah, he picked up a few of those. Yeah, along with his non-blinking and... Um, <laughs> yeah. Gareth will be aware of how his competition's faring so far. He might just be feeling the pinch a little bit after his last defeat to Ronan. It's gone very hit and miss for him so far, the former world champion. Yeah, yeah and um, th th break. this match is so Time crucial already. You know, it just makes such a big difference and especially with especially when you do go a couple of frames a, a couple of matches ahead of the rest as well and you know they've all they've all got those matches to catch up and points to gain on you. you just it, it makes these matches ever more crucial when you're you're now on four matches played and Quite a few of the field are still only on two matches played. So, dry break though from Gareth to start. Don't see many of those from Gareth. Yeah, it doesn't get much easier for uh, Gareth Hibbert either, as he'll be back in week six in a couple of weeks. And there's two fixtures on uh, match night six of the Premier League: Mark Farnsworth and Mark Boyle. Uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I know you've been sort of, you know, you, you're struggling a little bit, Gareth, and uh, you know, but you've got a couple of easy ones. Just, uh, just, <laughs> just Mark Boyd and Mark Farnsworth to uh, kickstart your Premier League. Just, just makes this match even more important. He needs to get up. He needs to get away from that yellow. But we have said all the way through this competition that it isn't just a, a form of of marketing or overselling the competition it is a it is a genuine truth at this point that it wouldn't be a surprise for any one of these players to win it because not only of the quality of one but also the format lends itself a little bit to streaks and, and quick form dictating matches it just makes it so much more exciting than normal tournament play I think um, you see Jimmy there he's, he's sort of well he's played that with quite a lot of sides but he was trying to get round the back of the Red, which he would have done it had he achieved the pot and angle, um, but an early chance there uh, has kind of gone begging because those those reds were okay, and just a loose positional shot on his first uh, on his first visit to the table and getting Gareth's back already, and uh, just noticed as well that's now four times that Jimmy's opponents broke broken this evening and every single time has come up dry. So if ever he's going to get two wins in the same night, it, surely it's going to be tonight if this carries on. And has to go cushion first to squeeze that yellow in. And it's positionally, it's not come out too kindly for him here. No, it was nicely done and um, it, it really could have... I, I, I don't always like to stick up for players when it, when it comes to, oh, he's been unlucky because ultimately you've always got control to, to an extent, but... A little bit, a little bit further either way, and he would have been fine. It's just kind of 
when things can go wrong and you've and you've just lost your first match, they, they seems like the whole world's against you. We've well, played pretty good safety there in the sense that I don't think Jimmy can make a pot for sure. No, I, th I think his option will be um, just to go to the left of the black if he's got the angle to and go cushion first and perhaps either try to pot uh, the red over the corner pocket or, or second prize cover the pocket but maybe you can't see the angle. Oh wow, it's a very good shot from Jimmy. <laughs> I think it's well Gareth has got a, a pot he can play, maybe a, maybe a couple. That was always the risk, wasn't it? Because the table's so open, it wasn't really a table set for a tactical battle. It was very, very difficult to hide the white. Yeah, and um and uh almost could have come out better for for for, for Jimmy because although he's covered the pocket, Gareth has He's obstacles, but this, uh, yeah, see the, the, yeah, the, the, his most difficult yellow next to that red and at the top of the table. The two difficult ones, really. If he can control the white. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What is going on there? Let's take a look at this. You are kidding me. No, didn't fancy it. Didn't fancy it. It's going to oh. pot the yellow. No, you're not. Goodness gracious. Oh, God. You do see it. When it's it rains, it. it pours. It is rare, but it does happen. And it, it's one of the hardest things to describe, to define, to explain away why on earth that happens. Gareth Hibbert there has, it appears, potted the ball right into the heart of the pocket oh. only for it to jump straight back out. I am speechless. And that's when you know, ladies and gentlemen, that Dan Davey is speechless. <laughs> I just can't believe what I was. Even Jimmy blinked. Jimmy blinked when it happened. Well, it was one, it, in, in fairness to Gareth, the way he reacted was that of a man who has very much seen that before. It, it does happen, but it is, it's so rare and it, and yeah. it is ever so frustrating as well because there's, I mean, there's literally nothing wrong with the shot. He's not come off a jaw. It's gone straight through. No, I think it's a, something the table manufacturers really need to look at because it's not right. It's not fair. You know, and um, so, yeah. uh, it, either they need to sort it out or we need to change the table, you know. It's, it's kind of got a... But it's one, of those <laughs> it's one of those weird things in Paul. You need to... I'll give you an example. That hasn't happened. That's probably happened to me twice in the last two or three years but it happened in back-to-back -back tournaments it happened twice in about two weeks are you and talking matches there or practice as well matches yeah um, get my chance to practice these days <laughs> but uh, 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 women need it but no it, it, you you uh, yeah twice it happened back-to-back -back tournaments both at crucial times ironically um hasn't happened for nearly two years now to me well now you've said it yeah, guarantee yeah. it happens <laughs> in the next tournament. Yeah, but it isn't it incredible how how the game can work at times. Yeah, and this is a huge shot already for Jimmy. Oh. He has played that really, really well, really well. Well, this was the thing when handed an opportunity, it has to be taken, and Jimmy has done that really well here. Black has to go. It does, and he's safe. And well. Just as it looked like Gareth Hibbert was going to get a frame on the way and get himself really up and running tonight, all of a sudden the uh, phrase that I hear so often among among the players, the pool gods decided to take it away from him. Reminder of what we've seen Jimmy up to already in this competition. He's been all the way around the results. He's had a draw, a loss and a victory. Uh, against Ben Davis, Mark Farnsworth and Liam Dunster. It's not, a, not an easy opening trio of matches, that's for sure. And if he can get a victory here against Gareth, if you look at those four fixtures, if you're Jimmy Carney, and frame, you've been saved against Ben Davis, nil. Mark Farnsworth, Liam Dunster and Gareth Hibbert, you've only lost one and you've won two, you'd absolutely take that, wouldn't you? Definitely. I've got a question for you. Um, I'm sort of keeping tab on the stats here. Uh, am I 
Am I putting Gareth down for a missed pot there? <laughs> what, what do I do? I think you've got to. It, it, it's one of those things that it, it is, it is in, by definition, a missed pot. But we, yeah, but we saw it a couple of times actually in the Champions Cup. Uh, never, I don't think, we saw it once in, in a corner pocket, but it happened a couple of times in the middle where I think for whatever reason the physics dictates a little bit more likely to happen in those middle pockets. The corner, it, it, it's rare, but I think we saw it, I think I'm right in saying uh, it was late on in the competition as well. It took the top left and and we actually saw the ball dip down into the pocket and scoop back out again. I think Jack Whedon played it. Yes. Yeah. I didn't want to commit um, to that, but I, th I think no, you're exactly no. right. Um, and yeah, he did. And uh, it, do you know the interesting thing is it seems to happen. It always seems to happen when you play it at kind of a medium pace. It never happens when you hit it really hard. Which is the interesting thing because you're Weird. always you're always yeah. taught as a player, aren't you, not to smash the yeah. ball. Because you know that it creates the risk and etc. etc. Yeah, it, it's weird. Yeah, the how. It, yeah, I, I, well, million dollar question, isn't it? Why does it happen? I don't really know. Um, Answers on a postcard, ladies and gents. Yeah. We've got a uh, we've got an interesting frame upon us here again. Mm. As uh, as Jimmy is on reds, has covered the pocket at the bottom right, and I think with the state of the frame. Jimmy's I think are we giving him the benefit of the doubt there? G Jimmy's uh, Jimmy's big favourite in this frame. Um, big favourite. Gareth's really got work to do to be able to turn this frame around because not only has Jimmy got that corner pocket covered, but there's also a yellow. Even if he were to be able to manoeuvre some sort of skill shot, the yellow and the red closest together uh, are unlikely to be developed in the same shot. So uh, Gareth in, in all sorts of bother and Jimmy with the upper hand. We're just going to see Jimmy play a really clever shot there and he's just put the yellow so it's not potable into the middle pocket just um just kind of turning the screw what you want to do when you're jimmy here um whilst you've got the upper hand if you've got two or three balls that are safe you want to get those out whilst you're before your opponent can start to maneuver himself so it's like a game of chess um but there's there's ways of there's ways of winning these frames you can either play aggressive safety or you can kind of just try and sap the life out of your opponent and let them hang themselves and, ma and make mistakes themselves or try and pull something spectacular out. But you can also, uh, if you do get a chance here, it wouldn't be such a bad shot for Jimmy to play the plant, the red and the yellow together, because that plant would would push the yellow into the bottom cushion and then back up onto the side cushion. could even do that and push his red over the middle pocket. It was a bit, bit probably a bit too uh, too risky, but whilst you've got the upper hand, Get in there first and get your bad ball out. I think that's what he's going to look to do here. Oh, we're going to see him go game. Needs to slow up, but that's perfect. Yeah, didn't realise this. If this, well, this red must go into the uh, must go into the uh, corner pocket that he's on now. So if it does, frames open and uh, Jimmy's got a chance to go two 0 Yeah, this camera angle can be deceptive at times, but it does look for all the world as if. This does go, yeah, you can see there, it clearly does. And Jimmy here now is big, big favourite to take a 2-0 lead here. Yeah. And we mentioned Jimmy can be quite a streaky player, and when we saw him take that victory over Liam Dunst to play really well in the process, I think you, you even mentioned it, if you, if you were looking at this as a... I don't know, as it's a betting man, you'd be thinking, right, Jimmy's on a roll here. That you'd fancy him for, for the next match. And yeah, if you were, uh, having watched that, if you were new to Paul, um, now I think Gareth was slight favourite with the bookmakers for this frame, but if you if you were new to Paul and you saw the way Jimmy played, you would definitely put putting your fiver on Jimmy. So, but, and, uh, oh, that's come out okay. He's he, he just sort of apologised to Gareth there because that really could have come out worse than it did, but... Um, yeah, uh, with this format, I suppose I, I would always say the value is with whoever's second favourite. Such a leveller, the 30 second, you know, f um, shot clock and... See Jimmy there. Oh, giving his blinks into the frame. That'll last him a couple of minutes. Now, 
I think this read into right corner and he'll want to leave himself uh, off straight on this last red. Uh, it's all about the angle he leaves himself, that's no good. That's no good. Wanted to come higher up table but just didn't want to be straight so he could have come into the side cushion and back across. Um, and that's gone awry and down. Uh, he's he's almost played six of one half a dozen of the other because he's not really on it into either pocket. Yeah, and he's also, he can still cut it in as well. So I think he, we, we, we will see him play the cut. Is he doubling it? No, he's he's cutting it all right. He's overcut that by quite a bit. It's a really tough one. Difficult to judge and the queuing was awkward. And whilst we were heaping the praise there on Jimmy Carney, he's committed a, a bit of a a bad error in the positional shot on this on that final red. This isn't necessarily a gimme for Gareth, although if that yellow in the bottom left has a big pocket to go into with the red being there, I think he's fine. But if it isn't, then he's got a little bit of work to do. Yeah, just every frame so much more important given that it's a best of eight frames. You know that Jimmy's made a mistake there to go 2-0, uh, but he's, he's carved the opportunity out when he didn't have to go game. But he's he's played his natural game and, and, and gone early for the finish but um, kind of took his eye off it once he'd done all the hard work okay, just sitting up on this a touch yeah and again all about the angle he leaves on his last yellow oh, it looks, it looks to have played that pretty perfectly yeah yeah it'll, it'll probably come just below uh, the middle pocket not, not risk going towards it it's perfect and um, Jimmy should have been tuning up and put this black now for one each, Gareth. Well, in many ways, Gareth Hibbert will feel he should have won that frame, <laughs> or yeah. he should have won a frame already. And he now has one on the board. He had that horrendous bit of luck with the ball jumping back out the pocket, but he's on the board. It's 1 1, and this is his tournament so far, and hasn't it really been. Uh, a tale of two results, really. 5 1 and 1 5. Yeah, so who's going to win four on the bounce then? From one each, if this carries on. It's, um, surely that can't happen. Surely. <laughs> Stranger things have happened than that, even in this competition so far. But you can see the, the, the players that Gareth had to play already Third frame, in, Gareth in this tournament. Tied one all. Um, the fact Side that he's got in. a 5 1 win against any of those players is. It's pretty impressive. He's, he's right up there with, you know, some of the very best around. And he, he's, in, he's in the mix for very much as we've seen so far to be able to dish them out as well as occasionally have to take them as well. Yeah, he's one of the. I think it's testament to the strength and depth on the the IPA that some. If you look at some of the players that aren't in the Premier League, uh, John McAllister at the weekend just won the the um, the Open event and. <laughs> he's not in it but that's his second tournament win of the season as well by the way um, but obviously the way the rankings are done on the two year system and the cut off point uh, it's tough to get in the top five so his top five obviously three qualifiers and two wild cards now when the wild card decision came about <laughs> you've got um, Ronan McCarthy who's in the, who was in the form of his life um, Simon Ward who's multiple top tour winner and um, tournament winner and and world championship finalist this year y you're then leaving out Jordan Shepherd who's box office and, and won, won the professional event this weekend beat Simon Simon Ward in the final I think 8-2 in about half an hour it was ridiculous um, Jack Whedon former world champion isn't there Clint Ironson multiple tournament winner isn't there you know it's, it's the, uh, and we've got 10 in this Premier League not 3 or 4 you know so it's um it be interesting to see as it comes closer to the uh, cut-off point next year when the um, it all comes into play as to who's going to get that top five and get themselves in the next Premier League. Because I think it's a competition that every player really wants to be in. It's, it's a it's a marquee event, isn't it? And you know, you're, you're real the names there that didn't quite make it into the competition. I think you're rightly pointing out. It just shows the depth of the circuit at the moment. Yeah. 
you know, we say this a lot with because um, all the players here are, are totally here on merit. You wouldn't, you wouldn't begrudge any of the players here. None. The, the, none the, at the all. place in the competition. No, none at all. It just goes to show, um, you know, like you say, strength and depth. I think there's a lot of. Uh, I think a good way to, to maybe sum it up is is there's so many players that are capable of beating uh, your number one on the tour or your number two or three on the tour. There's so many, probably 100 players on the tour, 150, all bar, pretty much all of them are capable of beating anyone. It's just doing it round after round, which is a different skill set altogether. And that's where you get your rankings come into it because it's all about consistency. And speaking of consistency, Gareth Hibbert has wiped away frame three there in no time at all. It was there for him. He made it look routine. And as the sort of player that he is, if it's there, he really doesn't tend to be there for very long. 2-1 lead now for Gareth Hibbert. This is what he's been up to in uh, in recent weeks and months. And really has been in generally pretty good form. And that's why you mentioned the consistency. Yes, hasn't won an event on that list there, but... There's multiple quarterfinals, there's a semi-final in there, and, and that's what you mean, the tournament play. Anyone can beat each other, yes, but putting together result after result after result when you have to play top players all the time is yeah, I think an incredibly that's difficult thing to do. Yeah, I think that's the difference with probably every individual sport, isn't it? It's, uh, it's you know, anyone can, can shoot, shoot a great round of golf or anyone can hit a birdie, but it's just doing it for 72 holes or... or it's all about consistency and the rankings don't lie. They just don't, they can't lie. They, the rankings are the most consistently good players at that time. And I think that's where, especially with potentially new fans of sport, you know, it can, can, can act as a little bit of a trip up because you see the players who are the top five, they think, oh, well, they're huge favorites going into this, they're, they're going to win. But all it means is generally, they tend to get to the last stages of tournaments. Doesn't mean they win every tournament. That's just n just not how this sport works at all. No, there's this, there's also there's other players as well that you you wouldn't be surprised to see them. Maybe you know that they haven't won many matches in the season, but they just pop up and win an event because, say for example, Jimmy would probably be a good example. Um, such a streaky player. Some days he just turns up and everything goes his way. Whereas there's other players that no matter how well or whether they're in good form, great form, or whatever. Um, they're always in the last 16 quarterfinals, and they can get to the last 16 quarterfinals on their B game. Um, they're your players that tend to be at the top of the rankings, is, is when they're not playing at their best, they're still very, very good. Uh, others can blow you away, or they can actually be pretty rubbish sometimes. It's just the way it goes. And where there's so much luck involved in pool, uh, it kind of lends itself to that. here is looking to do exactly what Gareth did in the last frame. And the Reds are there for him. And he just had to steady himself. He tripped himself up a couple of frames ago. And a clearance that he really felt he should have made with one very lax positional shot. I think that's perfect. Has he just run a, an inch or two too far? I think not. I think that is perfect. Jimmy travelled down with his nephew today. I saw him in uh, saw him as I came up. He was in a in healthy pre-match pizza. Um, I think it was a calzone. So much he couldn't so much he couldn't finish it. He used to keep going. He used to keep going. It's, just, it's um, a 99 out of 100 into the middle pocket, barring a kick. There's always that 1%. Yeah, he's fine. Nicely done, and a, and a return breaking dish for Jimmy. Jimmy Carlin. And this is the sort of standard that we come to expect from some of the very best around, and Jimmy Carney and Gareth Hibbert, no doubt about it, fall into that category. It's two apiece in this match, and it is so beautifully poised. It really could go either way. You can see there the stats are pretty much neck and neck. Who is going to take this one out? Or are we going to go the distance? We will find out after the break.
And a very warm welcome back. This match is finely balanced between it's Gareth Hibbert and Jimmy Carney. Two apiece as we head into frame number five. Myself and Dan Davey were just having a little bit of a chat in the break there. And I both said this match is something of a coin toss. Yeah, and I think, does Gareth realise he's made a red there? Kind of, no, he kind of looked away as if he hadn't potted a red, but as the last ball rolling, I think, went in there. Well, he was very, very lucky not to go in off. <laughs> yeah, very. The, the yellow swung back around and was superhero-like to save that white from going into the pocket. I think he's a little bit annoyed at how the table's laid up for him, despite the fact that he got a pretty good, well, pretty good connection with the break, or so it seemed. But they've almost split apart and come back together here. And this isn't easy. Bit of an awkward one. I think it's time for some silly facts about the players. Oh, I, I can't wait for what you've got for us here, Dan. All right. Hibbert's favourite TV programme. Yeah, apart from the pool, loves the pool. It's his favourite. Watches free sports at all times, um, even when the pool's not on. Um, no, he, he's a he's a football guy. He's a, he's a match of the day man. And uh, Jimmy, well, that's too much to. I can't even. <laughs> he's. I said to him, I said, give me a couple of nuggets, Jimmy. Give me a couple of things that I can sort of. And he sent me this list that's so long. He's like written an essay. He's written a book on himself in the space of 10 minutes while he's finishing his pizza. There's too much on there. He's a West Ham fan. Um, likes his mum's macaroni and cheese. And then he starts telling me he's a dedicated father and husband and all that. So come on, Jimmy, I'm looking for... <laughs> Jimmy, he's such a funny guy. <laughs> yeah, funny character, Jimmy. Yeah, I, I think after that, it's probably best we could... <laughs> <laughs> we go back to the action. Yeah, but because Gareth's actually played a very, very, they very are, good yeah. little shot there. Now they've stopped messing around. And we'll get back to that. Oh, has he hit that hard enough? He has. I think what we're seeing in the last couple of frames is both players really pick up their game. The first couple were a little bit scrappy at times and a few mistakes crept in, but in the last couple of frames, both players have broken dished and just starting to see maybe the best of both of them. This is the nitty gritty in the match. He, you see Gareth, he's looking at maybe either going into this yellow and black or just leaving himself. Okay, so he's left that. Probably going to leave himself a... It's, it's whether or not the black goes into the corner pocket. If it does, we could see him top it through. It does, it does, because he just put his cue exactly where he wants the white ball after this shot. And that tells me that the black goes into the corner pocket because he's trying to leave himself an angle to cut his last yellow in and come back across table. So the red, the black obviously does go into the corner pocket, but a couple of real testers here. Yeah, no other no easy shots. Is it the first jaws? Okay. Now that's going to be, that's going to be fairly difficult to hold, I think. It's a thin one. It's a thin one, yeah. Gareth will know better than we do because he's directly behind it. See Jimmy stare on. May have to go across a couple of times here. I think he could be just uh, just about be okay. I think. No, he has gone across a couple of times and he hasn't got there. He's pace-wise, he's played it very badly, but it's a tough pot. It's a tough pot, so he kind of it's difficult to criticise in a way, isn't it? Because he, he has played the pot fantastically well because it wasn't easy at all. Yeah. But he's he saw this actually with a shot that Jimmy played on his on a, on a couple of frames ago. It's sort of. Six of one, half a dozen of the other. He's, he's not quite committed to to what he wanted to play. Yeah. What's he got in the magic? He's not cutting in the middle, is he? Box of tricks. Oh, wow. That's that, all that, he had. That cut in the middle. I mean, it, probably impossible. The pace he had to hit that to get that to happen. But um, Jimmy now, and he's, he's got a slightly awkward cueing off the cushion, but this is 3-2 this is Jimmy. First one's in, and at this point, this is um, any any player's dream scenario. Just whilst he finishes these ridiculously easy, um, 
Jeez. <laughs> so his favourite music is Shaking Stevens and Elvis and Blink 182. There's a, an yeah. eclectic mix, if ever there was. Yeah, and I think that's the amount of times he's blinked in his entire life. <laughs> he's gone. You've been queuing that one up all night, haven't you? It just came to me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Jimmy's going to watch this back tomorrow. Thinking, oh, I played really well last night. If he gets can't two wins. Can't wait to watch this back. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just heard you give him absolute pelters <laughs> all night long. If he gets two wins, he'll watch it again and again and again. He won't care. He's given me enough stick over the years. Right, just needs to leave himself the right. I think he is going to top through here. Is he? He's not going to, he's not going to screw back, surely. Yeah, he's topping through. Doesn't want to be straight. He's perfect. Perfect. 3-2 Jimmy. And um, he did well not to, to, to get at least a point out of this. And we said earlier, you want to really be getting at least a... You'd aim for a win and a draw. You'd snap your hand off for a win and a draw every night. Four points. And well, the thing is here with this frame as well, it's important to note that this is... It's a... Uh, it's a break of a break, isn't it? Jimmy's got the next shot, and if he feasibly every player wants to break and dish every time they got they get a chance, that happens. He's guaranteed a point, and then who knows? He's got more than one chance to win the match, and this one should be routine. It is three, two, Jimmy Carney, with a break to come to guarantee a point and to go unbeaten on his second night in the Premier League. And Despite all the stick you've given him, Dan, you have to sort of t tip your hat a little bit to Jimmy here. He's he's playing exceptionally well. He's playing really well. He's having one of his days where he, he really is he really is playing well, and he's he's a handful for anyone because he does break well as well. Uh, but he's very aggressive, so they're they're the, they're the hardest players to contain when they're playing well. Is the is the aggressive players, um, and yeah, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy would be over the moon. I mean, the drive back, the drive back having to six points six frame, just Jimmy tonight. Great three Gareth Hibbert, former world champion, and uh, and Liam Dunster, possibly the most informed player on the planet right now. If you can come at this with six points, you will, well, you'll be over the moon. Yeah, the stats we looked at there were the stats just before this match started. Concentration. He's made a ball. He's made a ball. He's are the yellows not in? Well, he's got option, doesn't he? Yeah, he's got option, yeah. It's come out pretty nice. I, 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 I always think when a break comes out like this, and you can pretty confidently pick either colour set, you, well, you're going to be you're going to be fairly happy. You're going to get a chance on either colour set, but neither of them are... They're, they're both tricky. I think, you know... Easy, difficult, and tricky, and this falls into the tricky category. Uh, it's not really difficult. Um, the black, especially, if that does go into the middle pocket, which you can see from above, if you're right behind it, it probably does go into the middle pocket. So he probably doesn't need to break that out. So if he can get into the um, the red and the yellow that are close to each other, uh, up in this bottom right-hand corner of the table as we look at it, if he can get into that early, then then he's, he's got a good chance. Okay. Well, that's all right. That's all right because he can now play this red uh, with rakes of side, left hand side, and it, I personally would play it fairly firm because you don't want that red to go towards the other red. You almost want to make sure it, it at least reaches the red. Depends how much he can get into it. He'll know better again from this angle. It can be difficult. Needs 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 the side to kick in. He's missed it altogether. He needed to pot that thinner into the pocket and that would have created a, a different angle and he would have flicked that red. Doesn't look too happy. Looks, looks determined though, doesn't he? Yeah, the intensity is always there regardless of Jimmy's predicament in the frame. So he's looking at maybe a little safety. Hit. Mm, well, he often thinks twice when he thinks of safety. Oh, that's... <laughs> Tech a pot. <laughs> and is he going to be on it on the other side? All right. If that goes, 
he, he's not on it, does it? I don't think it goes. No, he can't be. Because if it does... Well, the, the double itself is impressive enough. It's a lovely, lovely shot, that. Yeah. I, I don't know here, Dan. I think he's got a shout. I don't know if he does. I don't think Gareth's going to be too... No, he can't be. Yeah, oh, I'll tell you what. That, that's a natural angle. It's a tough pot. Oh, time's running out. Oh, he's panicked. He's played a panic shot. The time was running out, and you see there, he's just... He's got down and hit one, and he's just tried to to leave the one on the back cush. He hasn't made. He hasn't played a pot there. You can see there a little, little wry sh shake of the head from Jimmy. He's he may well have almost got away with one here. I'm not, does this squeeze through for Gareth? Because if it does, he ha I'm not sure he has got away with it. No. Well, Gareth can take control. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Jimmy heavy second favourite in this frame. I think that's the first incident really in tonight's play where we've really seen the short shot clock catch someone out. Yeah, it doesn't happen often. And I, I, I think oh, that's good. He didn't want to pot that, Jimmy. Um, that's fine. Yeah, he, he, I'm afraid you probably think it would happen more often. Um, maybe surprised it hasn't happened more often. But I think uh, just adds to the excitement. He changed his mind with 10 seconds to go on the shot clock. Doesn't want to flick that yellow. Oh, that's a disaster. <coughs> wow. That's a disaster because now that red goes. Now, don't get me wrong. This is tough to finish these from here, but he's 3-2 up and he's just been given a sniff. And these are the ones you fancy him getting if you gaff. Now, he can knock this red into the corner and he can leave himself an angle. Just to watch out for the double hit. Hasn't got there. Hasn't got there. I don't think he's got there. Well, has he? He might have to whip out another Ooh. special swerve shot. I've already seen one tonight from Jimmy Carney. He can pot it. It's just can he get position on his next ball. Um, I think he's just going to try and make it and leave himself a double. Oh, I just hung up there. Oh, Looking at the table, and he's had a little look, and he knows he hasn't actually left... He hasn't, fancy. he hasn't left anything... Is the easiest one he's left for Gareth over this corner pocket. He's hampered queuing and it's a thin cut. So it's, not, it's not frame over there. No, it isn't. Gareth isn't going to entertain the thought either. No, but he's now left Jimmy another go. Now Jimmy will, will go for these. He may... He may he's going to screw across the table. Is he looking to play into the red off this? Oh. No, he's just going to leave himself a double. He's going to leave himself a double. So a perfectly straight table there. Now, the, the double, if he gets this into the corner, as he's aiming there, the white is going to come off the side cushion, top cushion, back out towards the bulk line, and probably it's, it's the natural angle, I think, to leave himself on the black in the left middle, or the bottom middle, as we look at it um, on our screens now. So just fully commit to the pot. Don't worry about the cue ball. That's going exactly where you want it to. Just fully commit to the pot. Oh, we've already seen him pot a double very similar to this in this frame. Oh. And there was the frame. He knows it. Oh, wow. If the red had gone in, it was frame over. Oh, he's marched off. It yeah. was close. It was close. And he missed it thick. So he actually cannoned the, the yellow and the, the black. If he didn't... If he'd have got the potting angle, he probably would have just slid past that. Well, these are the opportunities that Gareth Hibbert knows he cannot pass up. And he shouldn't really know his ability. This is ABC, really. Yeah, this, um, and you'd have your house and them going three each year. Yeah, and, and it's three apiece, Danny. It? it really is. Anyone's game. Definitely is. See that all important break next, and I think it's. Is it Gareth to break next? It is. It was we mentioned at the end of the last frame after Jimmy sort of stole one with a, with a break of break. And Gareth is about to break back on the scoreboard here. Just played that with a bit of side to make sure that he's got the, the perfect angle. Um, so those little subtleties that you don't often notice. Um, from some of these top players. He's played that really well and this will be three each. 
Unless he gets a bounce out. Yeah, he knows. <laughs> he knows. We roll them in, they ain't coming back out. And it makes it look simple in the end. It's three each. And well, we've said already that this match had the air of a bit of a coin toss and well it's it's followed that pathway, hasn't it? Three all between Gareth Hibbert and Jimmy Carney hit. Both would love a victory with their current situation in the IPA Premier League. It really couldn't be poised any finer. It's the crucial two frames. You, you, zero points, one point or three. So it could just be that one, one nudge. Flicking your last ball in off the break that makes all that difference. The difference between a draw and a win, or even a loss and a draw. A huge break from Gareth. Massive. Okay. Nothing down, nothing down. Nothing down. Oh, wow. no. Oh, and these balls look pretty good, don't they, they? Oh, come and pop me yellows. Look at them. Look at them. I think his di most difficult shot's going to be his first yellow, Jimmy. But uh, if he can make that first yellow, I don't know whether this one goes into the middle. But if he can make this first yellow, um, this, this, he's going 4-3 up. Extension called. Oh, he's called his extension. I just wonder if he's got to take this one down the left cushion. He is, and he's called his extension because this is the biggest shot of the frame. This is the biggest pressure shot he's played all match. Oh, and it's just flicked. The, oh, he's only, he hasn't potted that totally clean, but he will be relieved. Well, with the situation of the other balls, he will have known he just needed to get it. It didn't 100%. really matter where the white ball ended up. As long as it was down that end of the table, yep. you can see he's got, um, you know, he's got a couple of very, very good options. All here. about just making the pot, yeah. Jimmy there has. Yeah, just needed to get away from that red. So he, he played that well. May see him come up to the, just sliding to the right of the, if he were standing where he was just stood there. The cue ball over there just to take the um, red into the yellow into the bottom left. So it's just going to come up here. It's perfect. Just needs the pace of it to be right. No, that's not great. No, it's not great. It, it won't be so bad if he can play the yellow into the left middle, but I don't think he can. Because if he could do that, it was it was sort of join the dots. It was. I don't think he can. Now this is tough. Queuing on this is horrible. And he's, he's already played his extension. Yeah, Shot clock is ticking. Yeah, and he'll be playing on this, you know, into the middle now as well. So it's real subtle. Oh, it's a horrible shot. That wasn't very good, Jimmy. That wasn't very good. He just needed to come quite a lot further forward. And awkward queuing is a horrible shot to play. I mean, it wasn't easy at all, but to, yeah, to judge the pace when you... It was queuing. just panic stations, wasn't it? The shot clock ticking. He's just got to make the pot first and foremost and always yeah. worry about this afterwards. But now he is worrying about it. Yeah, and what have oh you got? What have you got, Jimmy? Oh, what a shot that is. What a shot. I think there, the shot clock helps you. Because he didn't have much time to think about it, beat himself up about it. Remember how he ran out of position the shot before? He just got down and thought, oh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in deep here. I just need to just... I need to just get down and pot it. And it, what a shot to pull out, especially at three each. Surely he can't miss this last yellow. Nicely done from Jimmy Carney. Well, he said when the balls came out for him, it should be easy. He made it a little bit more difficult than it ought to have been. But Jimmy Carney claims another point He's a in showman. the Premier League. He is guaranteed at least a draw from this. Gareth Hibbert back to the wall. He's looking to save his skin. That's what he does to you, Jimmy. He makes it he makes it exciting even when they're quite easy. That's why they call him the showman. See on the back there, he's had that nickname for ages now. I think he gave it he to himself. Even before though. Hugh Jackman made it popular. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy there, he's just looks so focused, and he pumped up for this. Well, he knows, oh, as you can see him pick up his break cue. It's in his hands now. Gareth running. might well have played his last shot of the match. Yeah, the, don't get me wrong as well. The, this, this, this break, this frame, 
will stick in his mind until the next time he plays in this Premier League because this is the difference between getting all six points and just four. He's got a chance. If he gets gets a ball off the break, which he's got. Oh, the way that he went. Now, it's not bad. They're all right. Yeah. Those yellows are decent. It is not bad at all. Another day that what that, that yellow just kicks that one. You see the black does go. The black does go, so just make sure you get this first ball. He's on yellows. I, I fancy him to get these. If he doesn't, he's not gonna sleep well tonight if he doesn't get these. His eyes will be wide open as per usual. His elbow went a little bit there. Well, whatever happens, this is our last frame of the match. It will either be a Jimmy Carney victory or a Hibbert Carney draw. I think um, that th is maybe his biggest problem. If we can look into this bottom right-hand corner, is whether the yellow passes the other yellow. If it does, if it does, it's frame over. But I don't think it does. So I think that's what Gareth's saving grace might be here, and that's the one thing that can potentially go wrong for Jimmy. He's just got to map this out, hasn't he? Yeah, not as easy as it looks because those two yellows are blocking each other. It's difficult to get down onto the bottom yellow at present. So, um, he's going to be probably, here we go. Uh, he's going to swing wants to leave it. Yeah, two cushions, so top cushion, side cushion. Thread between, see at the top of the screen as we look at it, on the left, the red and yellow, he wants to thread between that gap. All about the pace on this. I don't think he's, I don't think he's hit it. I think he's hit it. I don't think he has. Oh. It's close. Oh. We'll know from his face whether he's on it. Oh, he's on it? Is he on it? No, he's not on it, is he? Nope, he is not, you can see. Oh, wow. He, that's so close. Half a ball roll. Now, is he playing this off the red in the middle? I think he is. What a I shot. You what a shot from the show, man. I tell you. Oh, what. where's the red gone? Oh. He will keep us interested until he will, the very he? last ball of this match. He will. That's he needs to drop this in absolutely dead weight. I don't know if he can. I don't know if he can because if he if he if he can drop it in dead weight, he'll just about be on this yellow. Oh, he's playing a cannon into the red. This can go wrong. Played it perfect. Played it perfect, but he's only got yeah. He's got the finest. You saw the line. Yeah. To get on this black. You saw the line. Just needs to get away from the red that's above the yellow. Well, he's thinking possibly about getting to the top of the table. Yeah, you don't want to do that, Jimmy. Just the first shot was right. I think. All about the pace. That is just about, oh, I don't know. I can just about do it, I think. This one is thin. This is thin. No, for the match. It. For the match. It's there. What a well shot that is. Well played, Jimmy Carney. Well played. Well, I think it's fair to say it's one of the finishes, ultimately, of the competition so far. That was ballsy. That really was. That was brilliant from Jimmy Carney. The second breaking dish. What a way to do it as well. You can see <laughs> big smile for the camera. He is. he is very pleased with that and quite right too. The stats, it's one of those games where it really doesn't tell the story. That was a real titanic tussle between two players who at times were at the very top of their game and at times started to eke towards the very bottom levels. But Jimmy Carney has won two on the spin in the Premier League. He will go home happy tonight. We've got one more for you, and it's a rematch of our Champions Cup final. McCarthy Dunster is next.
very warm welcome back. This is the state of play as it stands in the Free Sports Premier League pool. Mark Farnsworth and Ben Davis remain top of the table, but they're joined by Jimmy Carney. Mark Farnsworth is the only man who's won three. Ben Davis and Jimmy are now second and third, separated only by a solitary frame. And it really will be a good feeling for Jimmy Carney to be up there at this stage. Obviously quite a few players still to play, uh, third and fourth games, but you can only get yourself in the position. And well, we saw this exact image not so long ago here on Free Sports. It was the Champions Cup final in this very venue. It really wasn't that long ago at all. Liam Dunster taking on Roman and McCarthy. And well, I think we all remember how that one went. But if you are of a short memory, Liam Dunster took the win after a pretty heavy deficit at one point during that game. And there you can see the result, 6-4 was 4-1 down and these two know each other very very well both are taking wins off each other and where do you see this one going then because both have actually struggled so far in the Premier League Liam yet to pick up any form of victory Ronan got his first tonight of course with a 5-1 win over Gareth Hibbert and for two players who coming into this were probably the four players in on the tour, mm, struggled a little bit. Yeah, interesting. They're, they're both, they're both. I'd say they're clones of each other. Well, they, Liam would be a clone of Ronan, obviously. But he's, um, they, they play a really, really similar game. From everything, from the amount of time they're taking between shots, their style of play. Happy to, happy to go tactical if need be. Um, balls of steel, you know. I think I think they're they're very they are the two they are the two players that play most like each other in this whole tournament, really. This whole event we've got, and um, yeah, I, I think, think Liam's a Liam's a young Ronan, I think. So can't pick it. No, sorry, <laughs> draw. Both very clever players, like really. Intelligent. The, the, the order they take the balls out in the, you know, they may miss. Everybody misses, but you won't. You, you'll rarely see them play the wrong shot. It's something that I've spoken to a couple of players about. I don't do the injustice of naming them, but a couple of players have, have said, you know, watch Ronan McCarthy. If you watch Ronan McCarthy, you you learn he never ever plays the wrong shot. Doesn't know. No, he really doesn't. Admit, look, couldn't sum it up better if you were to teach anybody to obviously all the all the footage we've got now that you can watch of all these top IPA players uh, from all the tournaments you nearly missed that but from all the tournaments we've got if you were to try and teach a youngster how to play you'd you'd probably let Ronan break stare at the table and you'd say what would you do here and if and then you and then you press play and if and if Ronan does that then you you're onto a winner, really, because he, he just the, the taking the balls out in the right order is huge. You know, it's not always about when I say shot select. It's not always about whether you should go for the pot or play safe. It's making the clearance easy as easy for yourself as possible. And Ronan's a master at that. Sometimes, well, I've quite often said with I've had the pleasure of watching Ronan quite a lot in the last six months or so, and I quite often said whenever he plays rare that when he's playing really well you actually ever see him play a difficult shot no, that's Cause right. his cue ball control is so good he never has to exactly and you can say that about a lot of the top top players is it takes you quite a while to realise if you haven't played them before and you're watching them it actually take you quite a long time to realise just how good they are because you think mm, yeah, well, let's see when they do something difficult but you actually come to realise the reason they're not doing anything difficult is because he's got the white ball on a string you know, you might be more impressed by a player that pulls a double out or, or plays a nice long pot, but... Um, sure, he made that one look easy for a very, very yeah, tricky bit yeah. of queuing. It was horrible. But I tell you what, just as we were as we were talking about him there, that was a masterclass from Ronan McCarthy, wasn't it? Yeah. It really was, and it just showed it was 
He played one very difficult cannon in there as well to, to open the break up for him. And even though he's slightly over on his last shot, it showed that he still does have the cue, the queuing ability, the quality to take on those difficult shots as well. He's had a bit of an indifferent Premier League so far. He had an awful opening night, getting a bit of a thumping from both Ben Davis and Mark Farnsworth. Admittedly, that can happen to the best of, of players, but yeah. he, it seems that he's come here tonight with a bit of a point to prove. Yeah, and he looks be, a man on a mission. He does, yeah, and he'll be keen to um, probably be inspired by Jimmy's performance and seeing that Jimmy can walk away with six points and he'll be wanting Second exactly the same. And uh, after, look, time although it's early days and obviously there's nine matches to play in this group stage, uh, when you start with two losses um, and if frame difference is going to come into it, two 5-1 losses can be crucial. Y you need to get out of this with with a minimum of four points tonight, um, but, but a six ideally. And, you know, it's uh, he's back in again of Liam's Liam's dry break I think that's four from four on the night from Liam dry breaks and you're not going to pick up many points with that especially not in this short format it really is important and we saw that on opening night Ronan really struggled with his break and got to real lashings in terms of the scoreboard and Liam's not left an easy clearance here for Ronan but the way he's been performing tonight well he's just going to play safe first well, there's your difference Okay, because other players, especially 1 0 up and Q and well confidently, they'd have gone chasing there, they'd have gone chasing a finish. That now that Ronan's played that shot, he hasn't left Liam an easy red or an easy yellow. Even if Liam can pull off a red or a yellow, um, what's he going at? You know, and, and it's just smart, it's just intelligent play. Um, it's Ronan being like the all rounder, you know, and, and see now, Liam wanted that white slightly further over than it is. I don't think he wanted to give Ronan reds and Ronan will take reds here I think. Yeah the red up to the left middle is very much on and actually if he gets this red which you'd assume he will it's not easy but it's there and now that that's his colour set it's not an easy clearance but it but it's it's there for him with a bit of work isn't it? Yeah there's it, it's 50-50, it's, it's I think, whether he goes for this. He, he could, in theory, cover the pocket um, down down even up this top end of the table now. But is the, you see the shot clock here, and he has. He's chosen to. He's just taking control of this frame. Now, yellow will squeeze past that red up there, but um, he is blocking Liam's yellow at the very top of the table. So advantage Ronan, but only just, I think. If anyone can turn it round, it'll be the uh, the Chess County player. Yeah, that's a clever shot as well. Just almost returning fire. Less less chess, more battleships in, in that last exchange, wasn't it? More Taekwondo. <laughs> of which, if you didn't know, he was an under-14 European champion. <laughs> you were so determined for absolutely everyone to know that, are you? I find it really impressive that someone's so good at everything. I think it's brilliant. Um, silent assassin. Well, now that we know that he's a former Taekwondo champion, it does maybe give a slightly different angle to that steely glare of Liam Dunster's as he focuses on the table. You'd, you'd think, if anything, that Liam had kind of studied Ronan over the years, joking aside, because he does play such a similar game and. Um, Obviously, what what a, what a player to model yourself on if he did do that. I mean, whether he has or not, it's a different matter. But um, just while they're tapping about, I asked the players earlier for uh, an interesting fact about themselves. Um, Liam said, "I've already given you those because you know the uh, the hobbies away from it with him being good at absolutely everything." Hibbert's obviously got ten data. Um, Jimmy Carney sent me about ten. I mean, he sent me it's just too many. It's, it's too, I didn't have time to write, it's, it's ridiculous. Ronan said, this is an interesting fact about himself, he's never had a hole in one at golf. I said, oh, oh do you play a lot of golf? He said, no. <laughs> so Dunster was straight over, well, well then I'll change mine then, I've never had a nine data, I've never had a 147, I've never broken 10 seconds in the 100 metres. 
it was all kicking off. What have you started, Dan? <laughs> what have you started? <laughs> Plan. I just wonder if, if Liam might fancy going for this because well, it seems strange you take the control away from that pocket. Well, the, the, don't be fooled, the top right hand side of the, the table, or top left as we're looking at now, where Liam's standing, that red over the pocket's easily got rid of by the yellow next to it. So you can open that pocket up fine. Now, um, oh, he's just, just running out of time as well here. Needs a flick. He's trying to flick that black because the yellow and black don't. The, the yellow next to the black doesn't go. So he'll be down table for it later on. Whether or not he has to leave himself a double on that last yellow, and just leave himself a shot remains to be seen. But uh, he he was definitely trying to go into them there. He likes only fools and horses. He didn't even think about that, Ronan. That's his favourite TV program. Didn't even think about it. He plays a bit of poker. He has got the poker face, actually. I was just thinking about that. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. He has got the poker face. Who blink first out of Ronan and Jimmy? I wouldn't He's say play here. Yeah. Four seconds. He's just covering the pocket. Played it nicely. I wouldn't say he's struggling with the shot clock, um, Liam, but it, it, he has been rushed a couple of times in this frame already. Well, he's taken that pocket, but it's, it's not necessarily a, a pocket that maybe he had to take. Maybe Ronan could do something with this. I think he can play a skill shot. I think he's left Ronan the... Okay, I thought he left Ronan the angle. Well, I think he did leave Ronan the angle to play the skill shot if he wanted, but it's what the merits are in doing that, really. And I think we're going to see Ronan take the red into the left middle and, and just play position on this other red. Into the, oh no. oh, I thought he may play position on it into the corner, which I, ironically, might well take now. But um, whilst Liam's got that, Ronan's got, sort of got an insurance policy whilst Liam's got the yellow and the black tied together. Don't get me wrong, if Ronan misses this, Liam's more than capable of developing that and, 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 and making the finish from here. But... Now's the time to go for it whilst Liam's still got work to do. And is he, is he there? That's a great shot from Ronan McCarthy. What a shot. Well, we mentioned in the first frame that part of what makes Ronan McCarthy look so good is he never has to play a difficult shot. No. But make no mistake, when he has to make a big one, he's got that in the locker. He has. And now, all of a sudden, the frame, which looked like for... 90% of it was going Liam Dunster's way. It's now this one totally the opposite. Well, this black goes into the left middle, doesn't it? I'm sure. So, what's Ronan looking at? Yeah, I think he's okay. He's not looking to play a cannon, is he? I'm sure if he gets below this, he, see, that's not a great shot. I'm sure if he got below it and, and left the white, say, for example, where the spot is now, I think he can see enough of the black, but. To get there now, he's going to have to play it with top and come across, which he can still do, but um, maybe made this a little bit more difficult for himself than he could have done. Looks like he's played it with top, no, screwed it the other way. Thinks it goes in the middle. No, doesn't it? Does it? Oh, we're about to find out. He's going to double it. No, he's not. Referee. A little tickle. No, that was good. That was good. You can see there. Um, absolutely fine, but he's played it with side. So he's going to get that, that sort of uh, domino effect when you play it with side spin. Um, whichever way you're... You, if you play it with the left-hand side, it flicks the ball to the right. So he's, if he'd have played that plain ball, uh, it, it, he probably couldn't have potted it. So it's actually a probably much better shot than it looked. Here is uh, Liam Dunster's record in the competition so far. It's not particularly pleasant reading for the Scotsman. 5-1 defeat to Gareth Hibbert on opening night. It was followed by a terrific match between himself and Craig Marsh. 4-4. That one ended. And obviously, beaten by Jimmy Carney earlier on this evening. 
They might just be feeling it a little bit here, Liam. And 2-0 down here to Ronan McCarthy. That was a terrific frame for Ronan to win because at one point he had absolutely zero right to win it. No, none at all. And they're, they're the ones that hurt the most. And it always seems to be the way when your opponent does that to you and they break next. They always make a ball off the break. <laughs> it, it is amazing how often that happens, isn't it? Seems to be that way. Obviously, it's not. I mean, it's probably not. But you ask anyone, they go, oh, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> the poor gods. Well, there's a very real opportunity here for Brian McCarthy with his ability at this all of a sudden from looking incredibly likely to be 1-1. It's 3-0, but now he's got work to do. That hasn't quite come out as nice as he, he wanted. He's got a decision to make here because he can take control and cover this pocket or he can cut this yellow thin left-hand side and play it off the red and open the pocket up for that other yellow. Now, the white's going to be travelling a bit, so he needs to be careful with that. But if this goes right, this is this will open the frame up. So the white, look, he's trusting to luck a little bit and... Looks like it's come out for him. It has, yeah, but look at what's happened down the other end. The yellow that went into this bottom left corner, one of the reds that he uh, sent around the table, has um, stopped that ball from going. So perhaps a double? But that is probably an easier lie than it was before. He's still got work to do, but he has slightly improved his situation. But in fact, he doesn't like it. No, and there you see again... Other players, especially tune it up, uh, especially feeling confident, would have still attacked there. And Ronan, um, I mean, he's left Liam a fairly, I think he's left him a fairly easy starter. Oh, no, 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 he hasn't, sorry. I thought this red in the bottom left was easier. But he's left Liam a chance to get back into this frame, but he doesn't mind because he's tuning up and um, and uh, because Liam's got problems. The, the, the red on the right-hand side of the table doesn't really go anywhere. Could maybe play it off the yellow. Um, but also the, yellow, the red at the bottom of the table doesn't go into this obvious right-hand corner pocket. So work to do. Doesn't mind giving Liam a chance to, to go at these, but he's uh, it, when you tune it up, you've got that luxury to just go, no, I'm going to play percentages, and if you get them, fair play to you. Well, it's such an experienced player as well, but he's long since long since got over the whole notion of being feeling like he's been unfairly treated by the pool gods as we say yeah yeah he's um, on first name terms with the pool gods <laughs> he'll, he'll know all about them probably had them round for dinner um, dinner by the way yeah his favourite food um, <laughs> favourite food is Chinese so probably had them round for a <laughs> Liam's favourite food, as you can probably tell by his physique, is pizza. Um, couldn't believe that. I think he was winding me up. Rona, is he just going to leave himself a double? He needs to get down. Oh, that's not the best. It's not the best. Just wanted to get behind it, and I think he was probably going to leave himself a double because he'd always have this uh, this yellow over the top right hand corner pocket as a insurance policy I suppose but uh, all of a sudden this frames he's not got a huge amount to go out here he's got to play a nice fiddly one he's going to hope to leave this safe yeah. hit the cushion he's alright hit the cushion he's okay but I think if he's left Liam this red into the bottom left corner then then uh yeah, this 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 could be frame over, and this could be that's not that's not a great shot from Ronan. He wanted to cover the red to the left of the cue ball, the the red that that Liam's going to play now. He wanted to cover that. If he covered that, Liam would have had to have he'd have had some pull to play. But has it reached? Oh, now that he's just taking his eye off it there, and I think for the first time we've seen Liam show a bit of emotion. Yeah, make no mistake, he wasn't trying to cover that pocket. He was trying to go game there. Oh, what a good shot that is. And he does well. He needs angle. He's a little bit straight. He's a little bit straight because he wanted to come up table and leave the white roughly where the black is, to be honest. Um, and then it would have been a fairly easy double into the middle. 
Um, made a little bit more difficult because the yellow is so close to the cushion, so you've got the potential of a double kiss. What's he doing here? Rammed it in with some pace, which is brave. I don't think he can make this, though. I don't think he can. It, with these cushions, if you play it with bottom and you play it hard, sometimes you can straighten the angle up. Oh, is he giving this. it a go? No, he just couldn't quite. He couldn't quite. It wasn't there. The angle wasn't there. Um, could have taken it into the top corner, but um, that's such a difficult shot. Yeah, he nearly had it. Had a sniff to go 3 0, but not an easy chance. And Liam Dunster gets a reprieve, and you don't tend to get many of those against Ronan McCarthy. He has been much more like the Ronan we saw for much of the Champions Cup tonight. Yeah, Liam will feel similar to how he felt um, on his first night in the Premier League where he's lost his first match um, comfortably and found himself a couple of frames behind in the next match looking at a potential disaster of a night and he managed to get a, 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 a draw out of that second match. So he'll be hoping for more, but um, at 2-0 down, would you take a draw? This is his only potential issue. This isn't. This is one of those where it's it's a nine out of ten shot, but there is there's that one. The only thing could go wrong is he takes his eye off the pot too well about the white, but he's fine. Um, now needs to miss the miss the yellow, so he'll play this with um, a trace of right hand side off the top cushion, side cushion, back out. He'll, he'll have like an imaginary circle in his head in the center of the table where he wants to land the white. So this fairly natural angle, just, um, is he screwing it? Okay, personal preference, but yep. He left himself pretty perfect. Well, that, that imaginary circle, he's right in the middle of it. Look at that, gun barrel straight for Liam Dunster to get himself on the board. It's 2-1 and well, Settle yourselves in, folks. We could be in for another epic between these two. Seen a few of them down the years. Do you know, ironically, these two players as well, um, two sort of uh, fairly stone-faced and poker-faced players, that probably two of the wittiest sense of humours on the tour, you know? Yeah, very dry, the pair of them. Very dry. And uh, here we take a look at Liam's recent tournament history, and you just see there we talked a little bit about consistency earlier on final quarter final quarter final last 16 final one yeah. and actually his his worst performance this year came at the weekend just gone with at the european open and professional he didn't didn't really get going at all and in the professional he got to the last 16 where he ran into the whirlwind that was jordan shepherd that day just uh, jordan shepherd again uh, hopefully we'll see him um S soon on our screens and we did in the Champions Cup but he's just one of those, a bit like Jimmy Carney um, it, just just, just, just such a flair player if he turns up on the day he can blow everybody away um, you know other days you can you can see he looks a bit rash or a bit erratic but I think Jordan's probably our our, our player who who is uh, box office if you like You know, he's, um, whether it's good or bad it's interesting agree with that as we take a look at Ronan's recent record and again you see a tremendous level of consistency there won the Welsh professional last 16 in the Welsh Open that weekend as well last 16 of the English but we see a couple of Liam Dunsters on there we do yeah. and in, yeah, in the last couple of months as well frame, yeah, these two uh, two very familiar with each other now and I was chatting to it. both of them a little bit earlier on and they were making little little digs about each other and stuff like that. I think that level of familiarity is, is now there between these players where there's a huge amount of respect. But there's there also a, a good level of familiarity about them as well. It's just a friendly competitiveness, do you know what I mean? There's no there's no I think we're quite lucky on our on our um, tour at the moment. We don't have any characters that are sort of uh, controversial or, or, or they all get on really well but what when you know, and the, and the banter is ridiculous to just taking the mick out of each other when, um, when uh, at, all, at all opportunities. But when, when 
when the uh, when the match starts, it's just business and they shake hands at the end of it, and then they go back to taking the mick out of each other. Well, Liam broke dry there, running straight in, and I'm just trying to take a look at the table here. I'm not sure I can see too many problems here for Ronan McCarthy. Uh, this one might be over pretty sharpish. Yeah, I think this next shot is going to be the key to the frame. If he can knock this in and come between that yellow on the left-hand side and the middle pocket, this will be frame over, but this is tough. Didn't make it look tough. No. Just on a string. This is exactly what we were talking about earlier. That shot there was... I mean, it wasn't the hardest shot on a pool table, but it was tough. There was pressure on it because it was the key to the frame. And... The top top players, when they know they he know he knew how important that shot was, and he absolutely nailed it. It was a, con it was a, it was a mix of, of three things, wasn't it? it? Was the crucial nature of the shot? It was a pretty tricky pot, and the position had to be spot on. And he nailed it? all three. Yeah, he's slightly overrun though. It's almost as if he's got. This is harder than it should have been. And he's got there. It's perfect. It's a great shot. I've seen Ronan as well play really, really quickly before, and he's actually... That's a terrifying experience. Yeah, uh, it wasn't against me, luckily. Um, <laughs> but he, he, this this shot clock, or, and I think the shot Almost clock... Almost like one of the when one of the robot wars got the flames out back in the day. Suddenly <laughs> <laughs> <really> level up. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking of. <laughs> What sort of robot would he be then? I mean, he's a sort of a robot, isn't he? They're both robots, actually. This is Robot Wars. <laughs> and Ronan McCarthy is currently winning the battle. It's uh, it's a really close one. Just to look at those stats, right? Liam Dunstan now has broken five times or six times. It's five or six. I don't know whether we broke first in the Jimmy match, but he's been dry every single time. And it is hampering him. He trails by three frames to one. Can he get it back? like he did in the Champions Cup final. We'll find out after the break.
And there we go, potentially to the distance again between Liam Dunster and Ron McCarthy. It's a very evenly poised match, this 3 1. Doesn't really tell the story of how close this has been. Ronan McCarthy has played very, very well, but with this break, he has opened himself up to being pegged back to 3 2 here. Yeah, and uh, first dry break of the match for. Ronan, could that be a sign of things to of a, of a turning point? Because as it stands, his first two breaks he potted one ball off of each, and uh, Liam's been dry on both. So Liam's always going to find it difficult to win these matches if he's um, not putting off his break. And I think it's been a really difficult night for him. He's not, he hasn't played badly at all, at all, and yet he's what eight three down in aggregate on, on the evening. Like he hasn't played badly. It's just the breaks have absolutely destroyed him. It is always, always going to be difficult to win when you can't put a ball on your break, and that's the issue that Liam's had tonight. I think you're perfectly right. Though. When he's been at the table, he's he's been largely excellent. Hasn't made a lot of errors, as tends to himself. be the case. Yeah. But. See any problems here for these yellows, or is it as straightforward as they appear? The, the, the problem, I suppose, is the is the yellow on the left hand side, which he's going to try and play on probably now if he's got the angle. Um, so I'll go yellow bottom left, uh, another yellow bottom left, assuming he can stun over, which I think he can. He'll go red left middle, uh, right middle, sorry, and um, last yellow to leave the black down into this bottom right hand corner so not, not, not the easiest of finishes when you're 3-1 down not the easiest of finishes if you're 3-1 up but one that he has to get and also the further he gets into this as he will be well aware the bigger any potential error gets yeah for example um, you don't want to be short on this and I want to see what angle he's got there. I want it to be a little bit further over to the right because he doesn't want to be leaving. Uh, he wants to leave the white ball kind of in line with the centre of the table if you were to do a circle. He's just about okay, just about. But he wants to get as close to this black as possible. The further away you are, obviously, uh, the harder the black is. So it's all about control and and and. The, the pace that you hit this up, but I think he's maybe just a little bit straight, is he? No, he's all right, he's all right. He just about cheek the pocket. But you see, couldn't get as close as he wanted to if he was just, the white ball was just a little bit to the left of where he struck it from. He could have stunned up table and got himself very close to this black. As it is, um, this is now more difficult than it could have been. Goes without saying, Almost, but this is a very, very big shot. And we saw one of these in the Champions Cup final down the cushion when he was behind and he absolutely nailed it. It's not there, it's not there. Well, that is potentially the difference between Neil Poir for Liam Dunstep yeah, and something because Ronan McCarthy here has got a clean table to look at and the way that he's been playing tonight, I've been really impressed by Ronan because he? he's, he's had a little bit of a dip in the last few weeks or so. If you factor in his Champions Cup final defeat, the first night of the Premier League and the weekend at the European Open that he's just had, he really feels like he's set out to come back tonight. Yeah, well he, it'll be so ex he's so experienced though that he'll know better than anybody how to get himself out of a, a, a potential bad run of form. Um, this is a risk, isn't it? Yeah, I think <laughs> this is Ronan all over, yeah. He's leaving Liam a chance to, to, to pot this black. What's he gonna do? I don't know. Um, he can't really, it, it's, it's tough to come off that top cushion because he's gonna have to create an angle that isn't really a natural one. Is he going to swerve it? Oh, wow. Looks like it. Mr. Dunster. What have you got for us? 
hit it to win it. Oh, doesn't want the white to follow. What a shot from Liam, what a shot. And a big, deep exhale from Liam Dunster. He was almost sucking that white ball back out of the pocket. Yeah, no. But what a shot. Well, but he was given the chance. He yeah, was given the so chance. And that has to go down as a mistake it, by Ronan, just for how it turned out. It's tough. It does, but it doesn't. He, that's what he would do every time. He, 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 I don't know. If he was six one up, maybe he would have gone for them. I don't know, but there's most other players I reckon um, would have gone for the finish there. He had an area to land in, which was close to where the white was initially. But he played a good snooker because he didn't leave an easy one cushion escape. So percentages wise, in theory, it probably still was the right thing to do. But that's going to hurt. That's really going to hurt. It was a really, really good shot either way from Liam Dunster. I think that's what we have to focus on there because, I mean, the tariff on that shot was right up there. Yeah, let's not talk Six about how well he's sort of done Time anything wrong there. He's just played percentages. It was just Liam that's pulled a rabbit out, rabbit out the hat there and um, breaking off at 3-2 down, feeling a lot better than he was five minutes ago. His break has not been his friend tonight. No, he's, he's gone to the cut break. And he still hasn't made a ball. I mean, he can't be happy. If we can look at Liam there, he must be. He just... I mean, he could be 5-1 up there, couldn't he? You wouldn't know. He's got to be fuming inside. Six or seven breaks on the bounce. He's probably he's probably rarely done that isn't in, in, in his entire life. Yeah, I think that's about the most emotion you're ever going to get out of yeah. Liam Dunster. I think that just shows the, the strain that he's under. It, almost, it says a lot for him that he's actually managed to win, <laughs> to win two frames in this match despite having his troubles with the break. He's, when he's at the table, he's still playing really well. He is, yeah. He's and having uh, to play better than he'd need to if he was cracking balls in off the break every time. Yeah, he's just having a tough day at the office and... Um, it will just kind of feel like everything's gone against him, you know. And we mentioned, didn't we, a uh, couple of frames ago in this match, that when Ronan stole one, oh well, he wasn't expecting to miss that. But when Ronan stole one, he had the break next, crunched them and cruised off an easy break. And that was what we feel happens with momentum in pool. Mm. Didn't go, that was the stage where you'd, where you'd expect, if Liam was to make a ball off a break, that was where it was, because it felt like a momentum swinger. It did, but we might have another one, because Ronan there has had um, has had quite an easy pot into this bottom left corner, but because that red's there, it almost makes the pocket a bigger pocket. Now, he's taking his eye off the pot, but in reality, actually, it, it, that, that red wasn't so close to the pocket that he couldn't hit the jaw. So, it, he's left Liam a sniff, and, and he's left himself the perfect angle to go into it now got options he can go into it off this red into the bottom right corner he can also go into it off this red into the uh, the left middle so I fancy Liam to get this skill shot and this could be another turning point it's always entertaining between these two it's always fascinating there it is there it is and that may not look great from there but he's got he's got a couple of options he actually he's good he can play the plant up table I'm um, into that top left corner. He can also play, he's got quite a big pocket. I think if he can just play this red quarter ball off of the uh, red nearest to the left middle, it creates a bigger pocket. It's just to see which way he does. He doesn't want to hit the knuckle if he goes up to the, uh, the plant at the top. Oh, he got away with it. <laughs> he almost did, didn't he? he? Almost did, yeah. He's, he's played it well. Played it well and um, still work to do. Uh, not quite. Wanted to be a little bit away from the cushion if he could be. Shot clock ticking. The problem's going to be the angle he might leave himself after this. Which... Oh, it's tough, isn't it? Because yeah. you can see the one over the middle pocket naturally will take him back towards the bottom of the table. He, he doesn't want that at all. No, no, that's right. And because, because the white was close to the cushion um, on the previous shot, he couldn't 
um, we call it jack up the the, the, the cue and, and get into it and, and play it with screw or stun to create an angle. So he's just followed it through and he's going to have to go back up table. He did have the angle, but is he still all right? I think he's, well, um, he's not ideal either way. No, and there's a couple of potential in-offs. Um, whichever one he plays, whether he plays the red into the top right corner, white could go in off. It's going dangerously close to that left corner pocket. I don't think it will go in, but it's going to probably hit the jaw, maybe. Uh, likewise, if he plays the red into the bottom left corner, uh, the middles sort of stare him in the face. That's an amazing shot. That is unbelievable from Liam Dunster. You can see the tap of the knee in the top of your picture there from Ronan McCarthy. He yeah. appreciated how good this was. Yeah, he doesn't give those out easily. You don't get many taps on the knee from Ronan. What a shot that was. He played that tap. That's... That's as, that's better than his swerve shot. That is that's a fantastic shot. Oh, he hasn't, has he? He hasn't, has he? Oh, I think he's just a patch. Just Might a have one. to whip out another one. Wow. <laughs> Don't think the natural angle takes him in off here. No, he'll, he'll just screw it's into just this. It's just awkward, it's isn't he? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, it's just concentrate on the pot. He'll screw this. Um, he, yeah, I fully expect him to get it. Nicely done. Great finish. Great finish from Liam. And uh, another error from Ronan, which it was just a bit of a careless one for a, for a change. I mean, he doesn't really... Everyone makes mistakes, but it's not often you get a careless one from Ronan. No, I think you're very right there, but what a good finish that was from Liam Dunster because that wasn't easy at all. It was a very, very high-quality finish from the Scott there. And you take a look at the stats here. It's so even tournament wise and the reason why it's so even is because they've both struggled this was their stats coming into this match and they've both found it tough particularly off the break Ronan McCarthy there you can see six balls potted off the break that was mostly in his first match tonight yeah, yeah it was he's really struggled in, in the first night and just showed the two of the best players around on form and generally it's not what you expect, but Ronan's absolutely crunched that break. Well, he's almost he's almost gone straight in off though, which would have been typical after you've just sort of had a couple of chances to win the last two frames and almost in off there, really, really close to being in off. Looked like it was gonna get tied up there, but he has got options now. Um, both reds and yellows he can go for. So we'll just see him uh, he's straight down. Obviously he hasn't got much time to think in this format and well, he's chosen his extension at the start, which is sort of... Yeah. Uh, and he's going red. The, re the received wisdom, really, to use your extension at the start to give you a bit of time to think about... No, he's missed move. one! Well, he knew about it, didn't he's, he? Um, you don't see a motion like that from oh, Ronan that's. often. He knew as Has soon he had as he a played kick there? there. Was it a kick or was it a... Oh, I think it was. I, I think that was a bad contact. The, the white's just stopped. The white hasn't topped through. If 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 he'd had a clean contact there, the white would have come through, a relative of whether he'd have made the ball or not. I it's think the fact that Liam's asked this to be cleaned is a pretty good indication of what both players think happened. Yeah. yeah. Well, what a time to get it, eh? What's a time? 3-3. Three, three. The next frame, obviously, so crucial. It guarantees either player a point. What a time for a moment like that. You see Liam there, well, I think was trying to uh, go into the yellow and black to open that black out, um, which is clearly a problem in this frame for both players. And he's just missed it. Um, and he's got work to do now as well. So could even see Liam uh, cover a pocket here into this bottom left corner. corner but um, I think the fact that he's just a little look there to see if those two planted. And I think that's the reason why he's played that. He just wanted to line up those two reds. Yeah, and he's taken control. Um, I think that's, yeah, that's, he's played that really well. They're, they're nowhere near as easy as they look to get those in the pocket because you, you, you have to make sure you don't pot the ball, obviously. Um, but you're effectively sort of playing it into the cushion. And uh, they're, they're not easy shots to play. Ronan is... Um, Seems to know straight away what he's going to be doing. So I just wonder, is, is, is Ronan almost 
Feels like he's taking his anger out on the table maybe after that last contact. Is he going for this straight away? He's playing a cocked hat, is he? No, he thought he could get in there and he did, he did. He wedged in there. That was... I didn't think he could pot the ball, but um, he had enough gap to just wedge his yellow in there and just knock Liam's out. And that's, and that's come out nice. And twofold as well, Dan. He's knocked his dangerous yellow, well, his dodgy yellow out by, by the black. Yeah. It's actually come out really well for him, unless... He's not left this easy for Liam either. He's overcut that. He's overcut that. Oh, now Roman's big favourite. Yeah, and we see Liam not too happy there. Liam and... This, this frame's out. How many twists and turns has this had all <laughs> Just thinking exactly the same Blimey. thing. It really has swung back and forth. Almost every shot. I think I can see from that overhead there. The black clearly goes into that middle pocket, actually. So he, he can easy. This is a little bit easier than it looks, I think. It's just this red, this yellow in on the right hand side of the table. I don't think that goes into the bottom right hand corner. If it does, he certainly hasn't got a whole pocket to uh, to aim for. So are we going to see, see Ronan uh, screw into the side cushion, come across and try and leave himself just below it and dribble it into the middle? Is he going to stun across? He must go. We mentioned how crucial a frame Maybe. this was. Maybe he's going to play it off the red. This shot is the pivotal shot. Oh, it went. I'm telling you now, that did. he did not have a whole pocket there. That shot was far better than it looked. to try and get as close to this black as he can. Yeah, nothing silly. Uh, anywhere between the yellow and black, ideally. Probably would have wanted to be a bit, a bit closer, but I think this is easy enough. Um, his camera angles can be deceiving, but he played this with a bit of drag. And it's there, and it's 4-3. Ronan, huge frame, huge frame. <laughs> Absolutely massive. Guarantees him a point. And Ronan, I think, I think you alluded to this earlier. At the start of tonight, coming in off the back of two pretty big defeats, he would have felt minimum four points required. He's now got that. Good win against Gareth Hibbert. And now, guaranteed a point from Liam Dunster. Can he take all three? That would be a huge turn up. There he is. And, and Liam... Uh Liam really needs this frame. He really needs to get himself a point because what, to be honest, two points from four matches isn't isn't a great start. But one point from four matches is obviously is obviously way worse. And you just don't want to be chasing from 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 week two onwards, really. See Liam there, just a little study of the pack. He's not happy with it. Well, we, we said this earlier in uh, in one of our earlier matches. It doesn't just become at times in in this competition. You're worrying about yourself. If Liam can get a draw here, Ronan has also only won one in this competition so far. It stops Ronan creeping away and keeps the bottom of the table tight. Yeah, correct. Because in in, in a few weeks' time, it may well be the difference between Ronan uh, or Ronan or Liam. Liam. Yeah, yeah, and you're not so much gaining a point from yourself. You're taking Ronan. two points away from Ronan. So, can you put a ball off the break? I think I think this will be a seventh or eighth break of the night, and he hasn't made a ball yet, and he he really needs one. Gets one. It's a, it's not a nice table. This particularly, it's congested. But the it's most okay. important it's thing okay. is he's at the table. Yeah, exactly, and. Um, that's the first time tonight, remarkably, that I've been able to say that. It is. I think he's. I think reds are the colour. Um, definitely reds are the colour. Needs a bit of manoeuvring with his cue ball. Um, I think he'll go bottom half of the table and then up to the uh, middle for those for his last three balls. But it's just all about cue ball control and yeah, it's it's a tricky little. He's going to play a couple of little cannons and um, potentially can he go for the gap? Didn't want that kind of. 
did not want that cannon. He needed to miss the gap. That's why I was kind of thinking he may have played it with a bit of stun off two cushions and come round for the red into the right middle, but he's in a bit of trouble now. And for those of you keeping an eye on the watch, we will stay with the final frame of this match. This will be our last frame of the night. It has gone the distance. We will either see a Ronan McCarthy victory or we will see Liam Dunster's second four-all draw of the Premier League. What has he got in his locker here? He's just flicked the red on the way past. Needs to hit a cushion. And he's not a player, as we know, who conveys a lot of emotion, but it just seemed a little bit despondent, that from Liam. He really did. Really did. And if this, yeah, that's gone in. And that's, that could be... Look, you, I've never seen that. I'm not sure I've ever seen it from Liam. He really has been disappointed with the way he's played, but he'll feel like he's played a lot worse than he has because he's such a perfectionist. But we say it again and again that the, the break has really made has really made tonight difficult for him. Yeah, he's, he's his own harshest critic in many ways, and he'll be frustrated at the last positional shot because it, it is a it is a you know, it's a marginal error. Yeah, but when when he's had the night that he's had on the breaks, it's those errors which are then compounded. Oh, Ronan, well. what have we done? Just, Just needed to stay steady that. on the shot. Just needed to stay still on the shot. And he's just queued across it slightly. Tension gets to everyone, even the best. Just as we say that. Well, Liam Dunster, I think, had given this game up when he sat in his chair. Yeah, but he's still got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the red in the middle of the table, closest to this bottom cushion, only doesn't, doesn't have an obvious pocket. Goes into the right middle, goes into the top two pockets, but it's going to take a very good positional shot to get on that. How oh, badly Liam needs this frame. Absolute perfection. Absolute perfection. Now the pot is not easy, especially queuing off this back cushion, but after the shot he's just played there, I, I really do fancy him to get this. He's got his line bang on. Yeah. Played it really nicely. This is tough though. This is tough queuing off the cushion. He's played that really, really, really well. Tell you what, with he, he must be, we saw his reaction as he last went to sit down in his chair and to come back and play the couple of shots that he's played really is a mark of the player that he is. Yeah, and this is, um, this is the first draw of the night and uh, really good last three balls, th four, four balls there from Liam. Well, in many ways, we should have expected this, these two mirror each other in so many ways that when they have the option to draw they do take it what a brilliant match in so many ways it toed it froed it went one way and then the other but ultimately Liam Dunster has completed another comeback of sorts against Ronan McCarthy he escapes with a point he might well not have done at several stages in that match it is so so even ultimately between the two and just a, a really, really engrossing game to end the night. It, it was um, for, for many reasons, but Ronan's going to really struggle to, to, to he's going to be so annoyed with himself. He has over the years, uh, and that one frame there, it, it counts, for, counts for nothing in the grand scheme of things, but over the years, he is the person you would have your life on, you would have your life savings on, making a finish, in a deciding frame, which this is effectively a deciding frame just because it's for a draw or a win. Um, doesn't mean that it's not a decider, it is. And the difference there between three points and one point, just that one shot, he will be absolutely gutted. Well, there you see, that is the difference between three points and one point. If he had have picked up the win, he'd have got two points more and he would have placed himself in fourth place, which would have been fairly handy. It does leave the table so balanced, though. 
And what it does mean is that Liam Dunster and Gareth Hibbert, already on four matches played, are in a little bit of trouble. But the difference between one point and two for Liam Dunster there, you feel, could be significant psychologically, if nothing else. Well, I mean, look at it. As we look at the table. Look at Jimmy Carney just leapt, leapt up the table with two wins tonight, and and he was on one point after two matches. He was he was he was joint bottom coming into this. Now he's up to third already. Um, he will, he will. He's the winner tonight. There's one winner tonight, and that's Jimmy Carney. Yeah, two tremendous performances from Jimmy Carney. 5-2 and 5-3 against Liam Dunster and Gareth Hibbert. And this is a little look at what we've got to come next week. Neil Roybone, Craig Marsh, Simon Ward and Ben Davis are all in action. It's a very Welsh feel to the Premier League next week. And we cannot wait for that one. A rematch, of course, of the World Championship final, which was such an epic back in February and Neil Raybone, one of the form players in the world this year, second form world champion, Craig Marsh. It is non-stop action in the Premier League. It's what we expect now. It's what we've come to love. We hope you're enjoying it as much as we are in, uh, in our commentary position here. We've loved tonight, myself and Dan. We can't wait to welcome you back next week. Same time, same place. We will see you then. From everyone here in Solihull, very good night.